Bravo Amen. Bravo! Please don't let it be morning. 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 Just remember, you've got to be calm today for Brian's sake. It's his day. Maria, you should be getting the kids sorted now, please. I've told you, I really absolutely cannot afford to be late today. Wallet. Keys. Not those keys. Oh, come on, you stupid, irritating... Trousers. Brian! No, no, darling, darling, not that cereal. No, your special cereal. I like the other ones. I know you do, darling, but you don't like it when your tongue swells up so much I have to inject food into your bottom. But my special cereal tastes so wee. Don't be silly. It's absolutely delicious. Look. Mmm. Mmm. Ah. Oh, good. Just about dry enough then. Brian, get a move on. <laughs> and where's Maria? Honestly, oh pears. They roll in at midnight. They get up at midday. They. Puke on your trousers! Maria! Brian! <laughs> if I get the next train, I can still have those figures on Mike's desk by nine. I know I can. Just, well, you know, I might have to run a bit. Well, I, I might have to run quite a lot, probably like Linford Christie with rollerblades and a jet engine and... Oh, no. Oh, Brian, that looks terrific. That really does. That looks terrific. Tarara, if a icker, doesn't he look terrific, Claire? He does. You do. You look absolutely terrific. Just take the car out of your mouth just for a minute. I think you'll be a hit, Brian. I do. The best thing in the whole nativity. What, what's your line again? Hey, what is it? What is it? You're going to say it once for your dad? Bah. That's it, isn't it? Bah. Y you're going to give me a little rendition before I go, are you? Are you? Are you? Just once. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Be a sport for your dad. All right, after three. I'll, I'll do it with you. Look. One. Two. Maria! Maria, I am going now! Maria, I'm off! It's time to get up. Oh, God, please. No, now, Maria. And I haven't forgotten about last night. When I ask you to stay in and look after the kids, I expect...
expect you to stay in and look after the kids. I do not expect you to go out, have 37 vodka slammers and come home at 4am with a rock band called the Puss Doctors. I was trying. Is that all you can say for yourself? <laughs> Yuck, 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 yuck. Ah! Ah! <laughs> well, that was a wonderful outing to the opera last night, Mrs. Perfect. And a wonderful meal after, Mr. Perfect. And how wonderful to return home to find our gifted daughter making mince pies for the homeless. With our wonderfully responsible old bear maintaining award-winning levels of kitchen hygiene. Father, I'm loath to see you depart, but I would urge you to hasten to the station lest you miss your train. Thanking you, my excellent daughter, for your care and concern. I will away. Success. Achievement! Repulsive. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Just relax, Eric. Breathe deeply. In and out. Morning, Mr. Eric. Just off to the post. Jolly good. Just remember, Eric, you've got to be calm today for Brian's sake. It's his day. It's so important for his confidence. It's the first time he's been on stage. Sheep number six is a really big part for him. Twelve months ago, they wouldn't even let him hand out the programmes. Yes, that's right, Eric. That's why you buy a season ticket. So you can leave it in your bedroom! <laughs> Bastard! <gasps> come on, come on! Oh, I don't believe it. I want to go to London Dungeon. In that case, you want to go to London Bridge? No, I want to go to London Dungeon. London Dungeon is at London Bridge. London Dungeon is not at London Dungeon? No. Strange. Excuse what is at London Bridge? London Bridge. Yes. Um, <coughs> what is at London Bridge? The bridges. <coughs> what bridges? <coughs> London Bridge. <coughs> yes. What is at London Bridge? Look. There's London Bridge the bridge and London Bridge the station, and the bridge is at the station. What's the problem? The problem is, I want London Dungeon. It's at London Bridge. Is it at London Bridge the bridge or London Bridge the station? Both. Okay, I buy a ticket. At last. Well, what do you want? I want a ticket for London Dungeon. Uh, just, just get him a single to London Bridge, will you? Just look, look, there's the money. There. Ah, a single to... to you, you know. Where do I get the train? Platform 1. Is there? Yes, there, where it says Platform 1. Where else do you expect Platform 1 to be? Single into town, please. Hello? Oh, hello, Liz. I can't come tonight. What? I need to spend some time with myself. But it's, it's Brian's nativity play. Emotional blackmail won't work, Eric. I've always done what others expect of me, but being with Caleb has taught me to say no, no, no more. Neazme al Kepok o Gandhi. I'm going for a swim in the lake of me. But you have to come. I mean, th this is a seminal moment in Brian's development, and, and God knows he needs developing. We're talking about our son! We're also talking about his mother. This is exactly why we split up, Eric. You can never see things from my perspective. Well, I'm sorry, but there isn't room up your bum for two.
fingers, Eric? No, um, they're in my case. Just give me two minutes. <laughs> so I said, I never said to Carol what I said to you. So how come Carol said I said to her what I said to you and I never said it to her? And I said, well, you said something to her about what you said to me. And he said, yeah, I said something about what I said to you, but I never said what I said to you. At least I never said it to Carol, I only said it to you. And I said, well, if it was about what you said it was to me, what it was, because what I said to you, at least I never said it to Carol. I'll tell you what I said to Carol, I said to you, and I said, shut your mouth, Dean Tottle, I'm not interested. Benny gets in a strop, and I said, why in a strop? Said, come on, come on, where are you? You must be in there. I picked all the papers up. I know I did. Alison, will you get that, please? I'm sure I picked it up. I'm sorry. Alison! I'm busy! You are in a strop. If anyone should be in a strop, it should be me in a strop. After what you said to Cow, you said to me. That's enough to put anyone in a strop. Mike, um, I'm just getting them now. You're the one in the strop, have You said two minutes. Where are they? Uh, they're here, in my case. Well, get them out of your case and into my hands. Right, um, can you just hang on a sec, please? Maria, it's me. Would you just check to see if there's a large piece of paper with figures on floating around the garden? It's not Maria, Daddy. It's me. Claire, what's wrong with your voice? There's nothing wrong with my voice. Your tongue's gone all big, hasn't it? I told you that would happen if you had the wrong cereal. Eric! Uh, working on it, Mike. Um, darling, just go and get Maria. Alison! I'm getting a coffee! Oh, what is this? Now, voice? listen, Maria. <laughs> It's PP, my office, now. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> well, all I can say, Ray Perfect, is massive big congrats from everyone on the board. The biggest contract in the history of this firm. And it's all down to you, big guy. Catch you later, hero. In! Ha uh, ha. Uh, you, you wanted to see me? I'll cut straight to it, Eric. I've had Dave on the phone, I've had Ken on the phone, Alan, Martin and Ray have left messages. Terry is furious. Mike is not pleased, and Graham Tunks is spitting blood. What happened to their figures? Hmm, well, I, I, was, I was actually telling Mike I redid them this weekend. They were supposed to get them last Friday. Hmm, yes, and, and I got them for last Friday and I put them on my desk and that batty old cleaning woman threw them away. You see, you, you, you see it's not really my fault. It's never your fault, is it, Eric? It's always batty cleaners or exploding cases. What next? Golden eagles swooping out of the sun and carrying off the quarterly figures for the Midlands? Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, um, I, I know I must seem a, a little accident prone. This company's been good to you, Eric. We've stuck by you through all your various stress-related what's-its. We moved you out of sales when you got that rash on your neck. No one was ever going to sell anything looking like that. But did we chuck you out on the street? Did we ask burgers? We moved you along to personnel. Then your back went. No one could do interviews hanging upside down on orthopedic wall bars. But did we kick you out on your ear? Did we double ask burgers? But I'm telling you straight, Eric. We've no more options for you now. Data is it. We can't move you sideways again. You'd be in the gentleman's lavatory. Oh, I understand. Get me those figures by the end of the day! Don't panic, Eric. There's plenty of time. The nativities, not till seven. And once you found the figures and got back to the office, all you've got to do is check the figures, correct the figures, retype the figures, print out the figures, copy the figures, distribute the figures, and deal with all the queries about the figures that are piled up while you're looking for the figures. Afternoon, <sighs> Mr. Berry. Still off to the post. Well done. <gasps> I'm taking them. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Right. I was here, so it was like squelch, 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 squelch. Then, bam. Hello, Eric. How are thou? Terrific. Terrific. Yeah, really terrific. Yes, we saw you this morning, but you seem so busy chasing your bits of paper. Oh, oh, that, that was just a bit of fun. Ha, <laughs> ha, ha, um, terrific, yeah, very, very, really, really very terrific. Mm. Are you, pray, going to the nativity play this evening? Of course, yes, terrific. Wouldn't miss it for the world, yes, terrific. Um, as I say, terrific, um, yes, your, your, um, daughter now, now, uh, is, is in it. 
not as much as we'd like. Oh, oh, really? What's she doing? Mary Joseph, the angel Gabriel, pilot Caligula, Drusos, Drusos, Nero, the narrator, Egypt, and God. And what about Brian? Well, he, 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 um, the, 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 the thing, the, the thing is, he's actually, actually, you know, when I, when I say, well, it, it, very heavily, in, 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 very heavily involved in, in, in the, in the shepherd's scene. So he's a sheep? Well, there, there's certainly a sheepy aspect to, to the whole thing, I agree, but, but I think it's, it, it, it's more symbolic sheep than sheep, sheep. And of course, sheep meant much more then, didn't they, in, in biblical times? Well, I'm sure it'll test Brian's capabilities to the limit. <laughs> And beyond. Use your anger. Use your anger. Use your anger. So what if Little Miss Priss is playing the whole Bible? So what if Brian is a sheep? You don't want to get drawn into that whole parents being competitive through their children thing. There's no point. No, because you've already lost. Again. Well, well, your testes feel like granite, but as long as you don't jump out of a tenth floor window and land on someone love spuds first, there should be no long term damage to anyone. So, so what do you think happened to me? A stress induced total body spasm brought on by extreme tension. What is it this time? Oh, pressure at work, and, and I'm really worried about Brian. He's ten years old, and he's still putting things in his mouth. The only things he should have in his mouth at that age are a lot of crappy opinions. We're all worried about our kids, Eric. But what's the difference between you and me? I won't let it turn my scrot sack into a deadly weapon. But you've got a different temperament to me, Doc. You don't care. When your wife was giving birth, you were next door having a threesome with a pair of anaesthetists. Exactly. It's how you react to situations, not the situation itself. But, but, but it is the situation. I've, I've got to completely redo these figures, which could take hours. And I'm supposed to be at the school nativity waiting for Brian to go bah, which will also probably take hours. What you need, apart from a soupy shower with a brace of nubile geisha girls, is a relaxative. Let me just check what I've given you before. Bisambuterol, ambuterol, quadrambuterol, clearletzamastim, hendropol, anzihestamine, thandrochloride, bisaman, antimodrexol, zangristamine, the antiogriati, amorphosicandol. Okay, let's see how you get on with this. True Zambuterol. It'll slow down your pulse, pull down your acid levels, open your arteries, and lower your blood pressure. It also makes your pee look like Guinness. But then you can't have everything. And Eric, in the meantime, relax. In the bin, la 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 la, stick in the bin. He'll be fine. It's only Bar. Even Brian can manage Bar. Evening, Mr. Eric. Nearly there. 
Although he hasn't managed it yet. He's belched, he's coughed, he's sneezed. Still, at least there was something coming out of his mouth rather than going in. And if he can just get Bar under his belt just once, who knows what it could lead to. Maybe we could have conversations where he talks as well. Come on. Come on, come on. Sugar! Roger and Jean. Roger and Jean, Mary and Dennis. And this is Julia. Julia, Roger and Jean, and Mary and Dennis. Roger, Jean, Mary, Dennis, Julia. <gasps> and these are the perfects. Come on, come on. Frequent service, great, an ironic bus company. Well, at least if I keep moving. was laid in his manger. Behold, we bring our gifts of gold, mm. and frankincense, congratulations, you must be so proud. and lo, we too bring gifts. Yes, sir. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> of fields far and wide where they graze beneath the heavens, our flocks are now brung before ye. Behold, the humble offering with which our adoration ye fully is given. Creatures for you. He kalinka, 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 kala, ham kalinka, sharanda, yimara, hoi hoi hoi, amakinka, kalinka, kala, yakawara, kalinka, kalinka, kala, he kalinka, 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 kala. Sorry, but um, I'm just gonna sit down. That is your special popcorn, isn't it? Good girl. You must be so well, marvelous, marvelous. Please, 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 shush. And now, let us give thanks in the form of a sheep. A sheep! Really, some people.
Amen. Viva! Data is... Data is... Oh, Maria. Oh, baby. Oh, Maria. Oh, baby. Oh, Maria. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh. Data is... Oh, Maria. Oh, baby. Oh, Maria. Oh, baby. Oh, Maria. Oh, baby. Data is... Night after night after night. I think she just does it to spite me. She might as well just come into my room and chant, You're not getting it. You're not getting it. Mm! Maria, get a move on. I'm ten years late already. Right. Speech. Check. Keys. Check. Oh, wallet. Allergy International, Europe's biggest allergy fair. Information, advice, displays, and lots, lots more. Yes, Allergy International. The one thing you won't be allergic to is us. Where is it? You put things down in this house and they just disappear. Oh, Claire, you should be getting ready for school. Puppy, look. I haven't got time now, darling. I've got to get to work. Maria, Brian, hurry up! But please, look. Well, just quickly then. Yes, very nice. Can we go? Yes, maybe. At the weekend, after I've done my speech. Maria, Brian! But today's the last day, Daddy. But, darling... Please, Daddy. Oh, OK, darling. We'll go this evening. Thank you, Daddy. Now, where's my wallet? Maria! Brian! <coughs> oh, I should have known. Look, it's got bite marks all over it. And why aren't you ready for school? I bet you haven't even been to the bathroom yet. Maria's still in the bathroom, doing exercises with her friend. Right. <laughs> Maria! Maria! Get out here now! I've had enough! I am not going to be dictated to in my own house! What? Hi. Oh, so sorry. You're having sex. I'll come back later. Sex in the bathroom. Sex all night. That's all she ever seems to do. That's all anyone ever seems to do. Apart from me. Oh! oh. oh. Thank you for my orgasm. Thank you for my orgasm. And thank you for my other orgasm. Thank you for my other orgasm. Thank you for my... Oh, we haven't got time to go through them all. <laughs> See? They're at it as well. Morning, Mr. Eric. Just off to the post. <laughs> At least she's not. No, oh, are you naughty boy. <laughs> we regret to inform passengers that due to a body on the line, there will be no service until further notice. <laughs> oh no! I'm going to be so late. Pee-Pee's going to kill me. At the very least, I'll have my balls for breakfast. Oh, not that that's going to make any difference. Come on, come on! I've seen people sleep faster!
Hello? Liz, it's, it's me. Look, I'm in a bit of a spot. Claire set her heart on going to some allergy thing this evening, and, and I've got to stay in and write a speech. I was wondering if you could take her. You know I can't. Well, how, how do I know that? The leaves, Eric, the leaves. They were an invitation. Look, how was I to know a bunch of leaves was an invitation? I, I thought it was a freebie from the garden centre. Well, it wasn't. It was an invitation to a show of my latest ceramics. I've made plaster casts of Caleb's and my genitals to celebrate our sexual potency. So I can't go out tonight, and nor can you. What? Eric, you're coming. Look, I, I told you, I've got a speech to write. I'm expecting your support, Eric. This is important to me. Be here at eight. I'm serving breast-shaped tofu at nine, and Caleb's genitals come out at ten. But Liz, look, I... Liz, 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 Liz! Even Liz, even Mrs. Five Headaches a Night is now humping so much she has to have a party about it. Oh, don't let it get to you, Eric. Just don't let it get to you. Is it my imagination or are you in reverse? For all the world's a sales department and we are merely purveyors. No, thank you. You're just astounding, big guy. This is the 14th time I've watched it, and it just gets fresher every time. Looking forward to your speech tomorrow with damp pants. Catch you later, champ. In! Late again, feeble. Um, mm, mm, yes, sorry, I, I was caught in a jam. I don't care if you were caught in a guerrilla war in the high street. Where's your speech for tomorrow? Um, um well, it's on its way, PP. Nearly finished. So what does it say? Well, that data is, um, well, the data is, or, or rather, data is, um, it, well, it's definitely in that general sort of area of data is. Feeble, do you understand how important this presentation is? Mega Bank Big Bucks are sending their chairman, Hans Dassler Hosler. If he likes what he hears, we won't just be getting into bed with the Germans. We'll be down to pajama tops and lubricant. <laughs> yes, I know, Peepy. -pee. So tomorrow, you get up on stage and you give an arse burger of a speech with mayo, relish, and extra gherkin. Because if anything goes wrong, Feeble, you'll be wearing a surgical truss for the rest of your life. Understand? <laughs> I bet he has masses of sex. Loud sex. Powerful sex. And he probably shouts arse burgers at the vital moment. So I said, you listen to me, Dean Tottel. You are sleeping with me whether you like it or not. And he said, can't we do it tomorrow? And I said, no, we're doing it now. And he said, I'm tired. And I said, so. And he said, I'm too tired to do it properly. And I said, well, you never do it properly anyway. And he said, that's because I'm tired. Alison. I said, shut your mouth, Dean Tottel. I'm tired. I'm tired of you. Alison. So I said, you listen to me, Dean Alison. You are sleeping Alison, with me will you, you like shut up? What? I need the end-of-year figures for this speech. It's urgent. Can you find them for me? No. What? I'm having me ear done. When? Now. Bye. Alison! He's doing me ropes! Maybe you can do your tongue at the same time. Alison's at it. Maria's at it. Liz is at it. The perfects are at it. Face it, Eric. You're probably the only living creature on the planet not having it. Concentrate, Eric. Speech, not sex. Oh, for goodness sake. Yes? Eric, it's Sandy. Sandy Watson. Sandy Watson. So what A-levels have you got? French, German and history. Me too. I really feel like a cup of coffee in my room. Me too. Oh, Eric. Oh, Sandy. <gasps> That's the best student sex I've ever had. Me too. So I was wondering whether you wanted to meet up for lunch. I'd love to. Oh, great. How about today? 12.30? Yes. Uh, 
Um, no, no, no. Sorry, the, 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 the thing is, I, I've got this really important speech to write, and I, I really must get on with it. Oh, that's a shame. I thought it would be nice to get together and relive old times. Twelve-thirty's <laughs> great! In a funny sort of way, it might actually help you get on with the speech in the long run. Bit of a break. Stop you getting stale. Besides, it'll be nice to see her again. Relive old times. Tutorials. Lectures. The college disco. I still remember that college disco. Me too. I had so much fun that night. Me too. I'd really love to go out sometime for a proper evening. Me too. How about tonight? Me? Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, no, um... Oh, your speech. Well, don't worry, I understand. Some other time. Mm. <laughs> 7.30! Eric, you had a ten-second jiggle with her at a college disco in 1975. Do you really think she's just going to jump into bed with you after all this time? Ah, but then why did she call you in the first place? And why did she go on and on about the college disco? Mm, if you're clutching at straws, she's the biggest straw you've clutched at for years. Oh, what about the speech? No, no, look, just, Eric, Eric, just remember what you said. A little bit of a break from it. Come back to it refreshed. And what's it been now? Twelve hours? Ah, by the end of this evening, you're gonna be so refreshed, it'll write itself. Besides, who cares about the sodding speech? Yes! Come on! Do, 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 do. Ooh, 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 ooh! Ah, ha, ha, ha! Wow, baby, come on! I'm ready. Are you ready? What for? Nalogy International. Oh no. Oh no. Claire, darling, I'm I'm sorry, but Daddy's got to do something else tonight and I'm I'm so sorry, darling. I I, I will make it up to you. I promise. I'm I'm really 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 sorry. That's all right. Maybe we can go some other year. So I, I promised Claire, and I can't let her down, and I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to cancel. But Eric, there's no need to. evening. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It wasn't exactly what I intended. <laughs> what with the suits and the injections and everything. It didn't matter. It was lovely being with you again. Well, I suppose I'd better get back to my speech. Good night. Good night. Hmm. Oh, Sandy. Oh, Eric. <laughs> Oh, Eric, I want you now. Me too. No, 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 we can't do this now. I can't leave Claire in the car. Well, well, well let's go to your place. Such a hurry. We're not in a hurry, darling. Come on! Come on!
Come on, you little devil. We're gonna get you in this time. I think we are in a hurry. We're not, really. Andy. No, look, I'm sorry, I can't do this here. Not with the kids upstairs. They'll hear us. Oh, Eric! Oh, Sandy. <laughs> Isn't there any way we can do it? Oh, Sandy. Oh, Eric. It's your foot! Your foot's on the horn! Move it over! No! To the left! To the left! I can't turn the radio off! I'll do it! Oh, this is hopeless! Okay, as long as we do it down here, and we're very, very, very quiet. <laughs> Is it? You're as guilty as the others. It's just that I hate you more. Now I want my buttocks back. Liz, I told you I was busy. Oh, yes, I can see. Right in your speech. I, I, I better go. Yes, get out of my house. I don't believe this conversation. Daddy, daddy. Oh, no. What is it, Claire, darling? I think I was an allergic to my Nalogy suit. Oh, my God! What have you done to her? Claire, darling, come to Mummy! Not too close! I'm going now, Eric. Sandy! I know an allergic. Oh, Claire, darling, go back to bed. I'll come up in a moment. You've got two seconds to pick up your bum and get out of here. Sandy, come back! Maybe in another 20 years, Eric. Darling, I'm home! Maria! Why are you still here? One of Caleb's cheeks is chipped. Just get out! I'm going! If you find the top of his crack, send it on to me! Coming, darling. What is it? People, PP, one word to say to you. Speech! Ah! Come on, Eric. Relax. You've had a really nice break from your speech and you're incredibly refreshed. Now you'll really be able to concentrate and get it written. So, dearest wife, is all my speech now loaded upon the vehicular transport? It is indeed, save the amusing introductory anecdote which comes hither. 
Then I shall away, my dearest. Many a best wish doth go with you, my spouse. You've got it written, Eric. Don't panic. All you've got to do now is discover the secret of time travel. We regret to inform passengers that though we have cleared the original body from the line, the man clearing that body has had a heart attack and there is now a new body on the line. Excuse me, sorry, but I'm in a terrible hurry. Just get off the bus! And he said... Lummy, Governor, I ain't never seen a penguin what looks like that. <laughs> but enough of my amusing introductory anecdotes. I was sitting at home when my daughter, taking a break from Rachmaninoff's third, pointed to a magnificent rare azalea in our garden and said... Behold, dearest father, cannot this plant be likened unto a business? So, so I said, we are, and he said, all right. And he took his trousers off and said, come on in. And I said, I can't, I've got an headache. Get out of my way! She was right. For like a business, a plant cannot grow unaided. It doth need a nourishing and enlivening addition to the soil in which it stands. Right, give me your details. Just you hang on a moment. I've got to give a speech. Can you hurry up? Don't tell me to hurry up. Hitler told me to hurry up. I didn't hurry up for him, and I'm not going to hurry up for you. Oh, I don't believe it. We are the plant. You are the manure. To you, Herr Desleposle, I say, come fertilize us. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't got time for this. Just give me your details. You need a good war to teach you some manners. Please. What is it, Edie? It's a rude young man. You young people, you're all the same. I'm 40 years old. Not too old to go across my knee. Well, thanks, Ray, for an absolute arse burger of a speech. I could listen to you all night. But we can't, cause instead we've got to hear from the data department. Your details! Come on! Not until you start being civil. I am being civil, you silly old boot! So, to give us the data on data, here's... Eric Feeble. Feeble! Look, I've got to give a speech. Don't you point that thing at me. No, no, no. Feeble!
get right all day, horsey. Just try it. Window cleaner. What do I owe you? Thirty-five pound. What? No. Uh, sure, surely. I mean, I mean, I, I, I know I still owe you for the last time. But... And the time before that. 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 I'll let you off the time before that. But I, I can't believe that. I mean, I, 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 I. Where's the proof? I've kept the list. Right. Um, thirty-five pounds it is then. Okay, so that's uh, thirty-five pounds. Right, I'll just go and get you your thirty-five pounds then. <laughs> oh, I've never got any money when he comes. I've never got any money when anyone comes. I've never got any money. <laughs> Thirty-five pounds! Oh, so embarrassing. Every time I get caught out, I, I mean, it's not, as, it's not as if it's a surprise, is it? I mean, he's been your window cleaner for ten years! But we must pay you. No! I won't take a penny! It's been an honour! And while I'm here, why don't I give both your asses a quick shammy? I'm waiting! 35... <laughs> no, no, absolutely not! <gasps> it's full! And it's Claire's. Here we are. Thirty-five pounds. I'm not carrying all that change. You'll have to pay me next time. Gallopy, gallopy, gallopy. Gallopy, gallopy, gallopy. Gallopy, gallopy. Gallopy, gallopy, gallopy. Let's go to the enchanted forest now, horsey. You go. I beat it. Gallopy, gallopy, gallopy. Great. Fantastic. Claire will be furious. How are you going to get out of this? Hmm? Oh, uh, make it look like an accident. Right, let's see. Um, a chair fell over against the shelf. And the big book of fairy tales fell onto my little pony, who cannoned into Piggy, uh, knocking him tragically onto the floor. Hence the broken neck. Brilliant! Now I've just got to spread the body parts out a bit. And... Ooh. Three hundred and sixty-four days to the gymkhana, but I haven't got a pony. Daddy's got stressiitis and I'm a bit afraid to ask him. Three hundred and sixty-three days to the gymkhana, I still haven't got a pony. Daddy's stressiitis is worse and I'm a lot afraid to ask him. Three hundred and sixty-two days to the gymkhana, I wish I had a pony. I tried to ask Daddy, but his stressy eyes is even worse, and the vein on his head goes biddly biddly bee. Seven days to the Ginkana. I'll never have a pony. I'll never ask Daddy, but I'll be dead soon, and then it won't matter. <laughs> What kind of father am I? Too wrapped up in my own petty worries to notice the needs of my daughter. Well, tomorrow things are going to change. Tomorrow I'm going to become a new father. Tomorrow I'm going to sit down with her and I'll look her in the eye and I'll say, Claire, would you like a pony? And she'll say, Daddy, you bastard, you've been reading my diary. <laughs> Oh, 
Brian, I don't want to see that chemistry set ever again. Now mop up this mess. Ah, Claire. Um, I'm, uh, I, I'm in a bit of a hurry, but um, obviously, you know, not so much of a hurry that you couldn't ask me something if you wanted um, to ask me something. And, and, and what, what, what I just wanted to ask you was, um, is, 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 is there something you, you wanted to ask me about? Who does he? Anything at all. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. Just, just ask me uh, about it. Yes, did he? No! So, is there, is there anything you'd like to ask me, darling? No. Nothing at all? Well... No. All right, um, but you must ask if there is. Okay, all right, darling? Oh, cause I've got to go now. I want the pony. And I'm going to get you one! So where the hell do I get a pony? A pony shop? Pony merchant? Ponies are us? Morning, Mr. Eric. Just off to the post. Oh, morning. Or you're just supposed to go out in the country and lasso one. Hi. Yeah, um, I'm after a pony. Uh, I was just wondering what sort of price range I might be looking at. Wow. <laughs> right. Well, well, I, well, I'm not looking for anything fancy, you understand? You know, just a, just a basic chassis. You know, what, what about the, the uh, cheaper end of the... Oh, oh, that is the cheap brand. Mm. Uh, well, mm, OK, thanks anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, just a bog-standard pony. Absolutely no frills, just four legs, a tail. <laughs> to be honest, you know, if it stands up, I'm not too fussed about the tail. Um, oh, mm, all right, thanks anyway. Well, w what if I bought a bit of it now and the rest later? Well, 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 well would you consider some sort of rental agreement? Um, I, I couldn't just borrow it for a couple of hours, could I? Yeah, thanks anyway. Thanks anyway. Thanks anyway. Thanks anyway. Thanks. Oh, thanks anyway. Claire's going to be so disappointed, I know it. And poor kid, she deserves a break. <laughs> She's been one giant allergy since the day she was born. She's been through so much. Imagine being the only kid at ballet who has to sterilise her tutu. time she actually asked for something I can't get it for her. Oh, life really is so unfair. And so, on behalf of the window cleaning community, I'd like to present you with this award for Britain's best kept windows. Still, there's no point in being bitter. Be thankful for what you've got. I need a drink. Galloppy, galloppy, no one us. Oh, oh, qué cosa me diga? No money, honey, no no beer. Don't run around, Brian. You're fanning the flames. Honey, no la vaditas. Oh, piggy! Damn you, pig! Yes, 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 yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yes, okay, great. Yeah, you, you'll get used to it, mate. As I say, he's not red rum, but at the end of the day, you, you get what you pay for, don't you? <laughs> yeah, of course you do, absolutely. Bit of luck for you, wasn't it? Me on my way to the chop house and that, and you wanting a donkey? 
Uh, a pony? Uh, whatever. Uh, oh, before I forget, do watch it with the old carrots. It's had a touch of gum disease. You should mash them up nice first. Uh, Fine. Oh, and cover him up in direct sunlight on account of his scabs. Right. Oh, and don't take him too near power lines, obviously, because of the pacemaker. Okay. And the only other thing is it does tend to get a bit stuck up in the rear end, so you may need to unblock him, okay? They, they reckon a wet tea towel's the best, though mm, I prefer to use my fingers. Okay, then. Oh, okay, then. Okay, then. Okay, then. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, OK, so that's um, 58 quid and 75p. So, sorry about the X-ray 75. It's just had to give him a jab for his foot and mouth. OK, well, then I'll leave you to it. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Hello, Eric. How art thou? Fine. Terrific, terrific. A- absolutely terrific. Uh, we were in the middle of our... A blonde de Vallée au Sabignon de Poirot. When we were disturbed by an unpleasant smell, and we thought it probably came from your house. Well, I, I can't think, I can't think what that could be. You're trying to cover up a donkey. I wonder why that is. What? Oh, no, no, no. See, I'm not, no, I'm not trying to cover him up. You, you can have a good look if you want. Please, go ahead. Um, of course, he's, he's not actually a donkey, you know, he's, he's, well, well, there is some donkey in there, I, you know, I admit, but, 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 uh, well, you know, he's a kind of hybrid, um, well, he's a kind of horse, donkey, pony, stallion, sort of mixed thing. He's a donkey. Mm, mm, donkey-esque, certainly. Um, well, still, I suppose, you, you get what you pay for, don't you? <laughs> you paid for this? No. Well, yes, yes, no, um, well, you know, it's for Claire. Uh- and you think Claire will form a lasting relationship with him? Well, I, I think the, the, the point is, while, while we, you know, as adults, look, look at him and think, mm, phew, he's a bit of a funny old thing, isn't he, and a bit whiffy, and, and his eye comes out, and his, his teeth aren't very good, and, he, and he's not exactly red rum, you know, it's, 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 I, think, I think children see things differently, don't they? They don't see the outward appearance so much, that, you know, they see... <laughs> what, what, what's inside? Yes. Well, if you'll excuse me, I appear to be covered in donkey sputum. Oh, she's right, cow. What was I thinking of? Claire may be six, but she's got a brain. She's got eyes. She's got a sense of smell. Oh, she's going to be so upset. It'll be worse than if I'd come home with nothing. Well, if I just put him in this, maybe the council will just take him away. There he is. He's lovely! You really like him? He's my best friend! You're not just saying that? No, I really, 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 really love him! Well, that's terrific! I mean, well, that's that's great! Well, it's, it's brilliant! I mean, oh, that, that, that's, that's really good! I'm, oh, 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 it's fantastic! I mean, I'm so pleased! I just, I, oh, I don't believe it! We can be in the Jim Carner together! Well, no, darling, maybe not actually the Jim Carner, no. Oh, yes, he got to be in the Jim Carner! Well, may- maybe you could just take him a couple of times round the garden, darling. And then we can be in the Gymkhana. I know. Let's have our own Gymkhana here in the garden, darling. No, we have to go in the proper Gymkhana at school with all the other ponies. <laughs> well, the, th- the thing is, Claire, he's not completely a pony. Of course he's a pony. Well, no. Um, to be honest, he is partly... Donkey as well. And I'm not sure he's really up to being in, in a gymkhana, you know, with all the other ponies who are all pony. So I think it would probably be better if we just kept him here in the garden. I want to be in a gymkhana! But darling, he's too old. He won't enjoy it. I want to be in a gymkhana! But darling, he may not survive. I want to be in a gymkhana! All right, sunshine. You're going to be in the Jim Carner.
not worth worrying about. I mean, after all, how bad can tomorrow be? So, Dobbin disgraces himself. Your daughter never speaks to you again, and an entire community gets a hernia from laughing. Is that really so terrible? <laughs> oh, no! Not again! Brian! Brian! What did I say about that bloody chemistry set? Brian! 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 That's it. <laughs> no, you listen to me. I should have said this to you months ago, and now you are going to hear it. You are the most unreliable and disgusting piece of out there I have ever heard in my entire life. Get up, 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 get Brian allowed to come? <laughs> because he played with the chemistry set when I told him not to, darling. Maria played with the chemistry set too. Is that why she's not coming? No, Maria's not coming because she's a danger to the public. <laughs> right. One, two, three. <laughs> Where on earth are we going to put the trophy? I know not, dearest husband. Heather's achievement room is completely full. Ah! Eric! <laughs> with a bound! Um, the uh, Gymkhana. You're taking him to the Gymkhana? How terribly brave! No, well, not really. He'll be, he'll be fine. Uh, won't you? Oh, um, well, anyway, anyway it's not, not the winning, is it? It's, it's the taking part that counts. So they say. In our experience, they're the same thing. Still, may, may the best horse win. Or donkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I saw it. So, what is it again? That's nut, fruit, banana, ginger and egg salad, upside down cinnamon pear cake. It's lovely, that, full of goodness. Is this a cute go free rounds of Mr. Lauter, the PE teacher? Yeah. Great. <laughs> And please welcome the first contestant of this year's pony competition, Mandy Trapshaw on Bouncy Complainant. Nearly 12 faults. Let's have a big hand for Manny Trumpshaw and Bouncy Complainant. <laughs> and now, Heather Verdict of Splendid Excellence. May I say, without fear of bias, what an absolute privilege it is to see such a beautiful horse and rider. I'm trying to do something.
Oh, I don't believe it. That is extraordinary. Come on, Heather. Come on, Heather. Oh, that was wonderful. That is splendid excellence. One of the great rounds, no faults, a new school inter-county and national age group record. Please, let's hear it for Heather Perfect and Splendid Excellence. inserted yourself into a donkey. I wonder why that is. <coughs> oh, oh, you you know, just, just a few last-minute tweaks. And what, pretty are you tweaking at present? Oh, j j just, well... Do you need a hand, mate? Oh, thank you. Look, if you could just sort of grab me around the waist and, and, and pull. <coughs> anyway, we just wanted to wish you luck. Thank you. Will Dobbin be standing up for his round, or does he have a different style to the others? Uh, oh, no, 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 he's very much leg-driven. I, I, I think you'll find he's all there in that department. <coughs> if a little challenged in others. <laughs> Would Dobbin please come to the arena? Come, wife, let us hence to the arena. The local press request an interview with our excellent daughter. Yes, and Eric's going to need some time to reassemble his donkey. <laughs> Not now, Brian! <laughs> Last call for Dobbin! <laughs> Daddy, quick! I know! <laughs> Do something. Please. Anything. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. It's a temple. Yes! Dobbin! Dobbin! I don't believe it! Go, Dobbin! Go! Yes! Yes! Ha-ha-ha! Ha-ha! You see? Ha-ha! Go, Dobbin! Go!
At least I didn't oversleep. Maria, can you get that? I'm getting dressed. Oh dear, Dolly, I think you've got a malady. Look, you're getting a rash. Maria, the phone. Hello? Doc, uh, j j just a minute. Sorry. Claire, not that Dolly, darling. She's full of things that make you unwell. Maria, come and keep an eye on Claire. Sorry, Doc. I'm just phoning to say good luck with the interview, mate. Feeling positive? <gasps> well, yes, you know, in, in a negative sort of way. Eric, an interview is like sex. You just go in there, drop your pants and get down to business. And that's normally when the laughter starts. So if it goes wrong, you just pull on your pants, zip up your flies, and get on to the next one. What next one? This is my first interview for 15 years. The next one I'm likely to get will be with St. Peter. Eric, you're putting yourself under too much pressure. I am under pressure. I really need a new job. Something that'll give me a career, a future, a life. You're not helping yourself getting all wound up like this. There's only one way you're ever going to give yourself a chance at this interview. And what's that? Relax. <sighs> right. Relax. CV. Oh, no! Why is it anything important ends up in your mouth? Why can't you chew on something that doesn't matter? Maria! Brian needs you! There! Oh, poor Gwendolyn. Your nullity's getting worse. -er. Claire, 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 please put Gwendolyn down. Maria! You're supposed to play with prescription, Dolly, darling. I can't unwrap her. You do it. Oh, darling, I haven't got time. You'll have to ask Maria. If she ever gets up! Bye-bye, Gwendolyn. Maria, I'm leaving now. Shift yourself. Santa Maria, Madonna. Oh, it's my headache. Right, that's it. It's fizzy pill. Where the hell have you been? Oh. You went out last night at seven o'clock to get some tea bags, and now it's eight o'clock the next morning. I am getting sick and tired of this. You go out for a pint and come back two days later having been to a rave in Calais. I send you to collect the kids from school. The next time I see you is on the nine o'clock news. And today of all days, I mean, I really needed your help this morning. You know how important this interview is. When I get home, you and I are going to have a serious chat, madam. In the meantime, you are going to start by making the kids a proper cooked breakfast. Now, is that clear? Will you keep your noise down? Absolutely unbelievable. If Satan had no pair, I'd do a swap. I would. Just calm down, relax, just concentrate on your interview. Be cool, be calm, be totally focused. So if you'd like to take a seat, the nurse will see you as soon as she can. And uh, when will that be? You see, the thing is, I, I, I've got an interview. If you'd like to take a seat, the nurse will see you as soon as she can. N no, no, you don't understand. It, I've got an interview in 20 minutes and I, and I really need to be seen straight away. I'm sorry, sir, but you are not a priority case. I, I was knocked down by an ambulance. Yes, but it was only a glancing blow. So if you'd like to take a seat, the nurse will see you as soon as she can. Look, look, it's important. I'm uh, only doing my job, sir. So if you'd like to take a seat, the nurse will see you as soon as she can. OK, uh, OK, I'm going. I'll be over here, OK? 
Hello? Hey, yes, uh, um, I'm supposed to be having an interview with you at 9.15. Um, yes, that's right, Eric Feeble. I'm, I'm afraid I've been delayed. Um, I wonder... 11 o'clock. Yes, that would be terrific. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I'm here. Nathaniel Chuff. I am here. Excuse me, I'm in a bit of a rush and... Uh, if you'd like to take a seat, I'll see you as soon as I can. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I tell you something, pubic lice don't half itch. Oh. So he says we always stop in on a Tuesday, and I said I know we always stop in on a Tuesday. I said I want to go to a pub, and he said well, we always go to a pub on Friday, and I said I know we always go to the pub on Friday. I want to go to a pub on a Tuesday. Alison, it's me. So? I'm going to be late. Uh, any messages? Yeah, one. Urgent. But what was it? Can't remember. Well, who was it from? Don't know. Didn't you write it down? I was busy. Oh, well, well if, if anyone asks where I am, could you just tell them... Uh, t t oh, uh, tell them I'm at the dentist. What? Are, are you writing it down? Yeah. You have written it down? Yeah, yeah, D-E-N-T-I-S-T. Good, I'll, I'll see you later. And he said we go to the pub on Friday and we stop in on a Tuesday. And I said, I want to go to the pub Tuesday. I don't like stopping in on a Tuesday. And he said, well, I don't like going to the pub on Tuesday. And I said, well, I don't like you. <laughs> Look at him jump. Fight. No, 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 please. No, really. I, 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 I don't fight. Thank you. Get it in a fight. No, 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 it was an accident. I got mine in a fight. Stabber Harris done this. Really? Hmm. I'm just Stabber. I'll tell you, if you were Stabber Harris, you'd be dead by now. Look, he can do somersaults and all. Oh, hang on, where's he going? I think he's found a new home. <laughs> hey, do you want me to have a wee look for him? No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, thank you. Hey, can I have him back when you're finished with him? Uh, hello? Liz? What's, what's the matter? They're coming to kill him! Who? Oh. My tree! Sikanda! The council are coming to cut him down! They're not! They're just coming to lop off a few branches. Oh, and how would you feel if someone lopped off your limbs? Well, I don't know, do I? But mine don't grow back like his do. It's not a joke, Eric! They're coming to murder him! They're not! They're just going to lop off a few branches. They've got to. The roots are undermining the houses. That's such a narrow view, Eric. It's the houses that are suppressing his roots. You've got to come and stop it! Don't be ridiculous! The street's about to capsize! Eric, please! I'm all on my own! Eric Feeble? Uh, look, look, Liz, I'm, I'm in casualty. I've, I've got to go. Last call for Eric Feeble. Okay. Papagena Raymond. Uh, here. Papagena Raymond? No, 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 Eric Feeble. Sorry, we've moved on to Papagena Raymond. Papagena Raymond? Mm hmm. I've got to be seen that they just called and my you name. I'm not answer. If you'd like to take a seat, the nurse will see you as soon as she can. But I couldn't answer. I was in the loo. Well, perhaps you shouldn't have gone to the loo, sir. I had to. I got pubic lice of that man over there. Santa Maria, Madonna. Oh, it's my headache.
Dolly, prescription Dolly never get ill. If you'd like to take a seat, the nurse will see you as soon as she can. I, I, I'm really sorry about that. Yeah. Yes, 2.15 would be perfect. I, I promise, I, I will be there. I, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you. Thank, 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 uh, Eric Feeble? Uh, Eric Feeble? Uh, Eric Feeble? Uh, Last call for Eric Feeble? Uh, no? Barry Brain Spiller? Uh, so I said, look, Dean Tottle, if we go to the pub Tuesday, it doesn't mean we can't go Friday. We can go Tuesday and Friday. Where the Asperger's is, Eric? Oh, oh, he did say he's, he's, um, he, he, he's, uh... Oh, yeah, he, he's gone to funeral. Family? Uh, uh oh, he, yeah. Who? Uh, 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 uh I, I, I don't know. His mum. Look, but you have to see me. The nurse called my name again. And you didn't answer again. No, 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 you don't understand. I've been stabbed. I'm, I'm, I'm a priority case now. Oh, no. You're more of a priority case than you were, but you're not enough of a priority case to actually be a priority case. So, so what would it take for me to become a priority case? Perhaps if I climbed into a body bag and did the zip-up. If you'd like to take a seat, the nurse will see you as soon as she can. Oh, I love the smell of a cooked breakfast. <laughs> if you'd like to take a seat, the nurse will see you as soon as she can. Barnaby, love, a love, a love, a love. Thank you. Yes. Thank 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 you. Thank 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 you. Four 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 forty five. Eric. How did it go? Blimey, mate. Interview panel a bit rough on you, eh? Well, I haven't got there yet. Oh, Eric. It's not my fault. I've been stuck here all day. No one will see me because I'm not a priority case. I've become more of a priority case than I was, but not enough of a priority case to actually be a priority case. And if I want to be a priority case, then I need to be even more of a priority case than I was when I became more of a priority case. <sighs> I'm never going to get there, Doc. Not in this life. You couldn't take a look at me, could you? Bit of a hurry, mate. I've got a meeting in a birthing tank with a midwife called Iqbala. Uh, but let me see what I can do. Janine, can I have a little word yet in private? Anytime. <laughs> uh, yes? Feeble, it's PP. Phoning to say how sorry I am. What you've just been through. It's a double ass burger with cheese on. Uh, what, what, what I've just been through. Uh, well, could, could you just hold on a moment? Uh, what, what have I been through? What have I, what have I been through? Dentist! 
Ha! Oh, oh, that, well, well, you know, it wasn't that bad. Wasn't it? You know how it is. You worry about it beforehand, um, but afterwards you, you feel relieved. I suppose if you didn't get on with her. Who? Your mother. I, I get on with my mother. You said you felt relieved. Well, y yes, I think most people do. I, I mean, you know, once they've actually filled in the hole, it it's over, isn't it? Hang on a minute, Eric. There's something funny going on. Alison told me you were at your mother's funeral. <gasps> oh, 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 yeah, 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 yes. Ah, uh, uh, right. Uh, uh, the funeral. Hmm. Well, I'm in. De I'm in denial. I'm, I'm in denial. Oh God. And I'm in denial. My mother's gone away, and then how I miss her. Sorry, sir, I, I just remembered. Eric's not gone to funeral, he's gone to the dentist. Feeble! Ah! Ah! Eric Feeble? Uh, excuse me, mate. With you in a moment. Yes, I'm in a hurry. Could we get on with it? Of course. <laughs> you know, strictly speaking, I, I shouldn't see you. I know. Um, I'm not a priority case, but I have an interview and my life depends on it. Oh, dear. The sink seems to be blocked. I'll do that. You dry your hands. Oh! <laughs> so that's where I dropped it. Now, this angle... We'll probably need to send you down to X-ray. Oh my god, a private patient! Hello? Do Dr. Williams? Dr. Anything? Hello? Hello? Hospital people of any description? Fine. I I I'll get my own x rays then, shall I? In you go, you little monkey. I don't know how it could have happened. I'm usually so careful. I was buffing her cuticles when suddenly she screamed and... <laughs> I must have buffed too hard. Excuse me, sir. They're all busy with a private patient. If you'd like to take a seat, someone will see you as soon as they can. You say that once more. I'm not going to miss this interview. I'm not. No. No, the camera thingy, the camera thingy. Uh, yeah, aha. Look, it's worse than we thought. Yes, the varnish is very badly chipped. I think we may have to repaint totally. Either that, or we're looking at a false name. No, Derek. I'm gonna save this one. I can't live with myself knowing what I've done to her. Give me the nail scissors, Renee.
Oh, God. Please. No. Murderer! Murderer! Please. Not now. I hope you're satisfied. Look! Confront it, Eric. Confront what you've done. Now is really not a good time, this. Now is never a good time, is it? <sighs> Look at me. I've got two broken ankles, stab wounds in both legs, a scalpel in my hand. I've been beaten up and irradiated. Oh, that's typical. Me, 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 me. Sikander's dead. And all you can think of is your petty little Alberts. This is exactly why we split up, Eric. You're the most selfish person I have ever met. <laughs> Here are my x-rays. If you'd like to take a seat, Nurse will see you as soon as she can. No. No, 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 no. Now. The thing is, sir, as I think I've mentioned before, you're not a priority case, so if you... Don't say it. If you'd like to take a seat, the nurse will see you as soon as she can. <laughs> <laughs> priority case, priority case, we have a priority case. Uh, I think we'll have to give the little girl something. Didn't we have some more, please? Yeah, there's a bottle on top of the cabinet next to the boy. Right. The way in which tragedy was averted is a testament to health care in Britain. It makes me proud that someone can be seen so quickly, efficiently, and privately. Thank you to the thousands of well-wishers for their cards, letters, flowers, and gifts. And especially to the many people who volunteered as fingernail donors. Good question. Well, lucky old you. <laughs> Wasn't a heart attack at all. Just stress. You know, you ought to relax more. Slow down a bit. Otherwise, you're really going to make yourself ill. Oh, no, private patient. I've been bleeped. What's happened? It's an emergency. It's a man with a piece of spinach caught between his teeth. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm just setting off now, and I'll be with you in ten minutes. You've really been so patient, and, well, I, I just don't have the words to express how grateful I am. God bless you all. Shouldn't you be in hospital?
What? Thank you for selecting blind assistance. No, no, no. Off, off, off. For cash withdrawal, say cash now. Cash. Please speak loudly and clearly into the microphone. Cash. Thank you for selecting cash. Please select cash amount now. Do you have five pounds, please? Please speak loudly and clearly into the microphone. Five pounds. <laughs> the minimum withdrawal from this machine is ten pounds. Uh, ten pounds. Just give me ten pounds. Thank you for selecting ten pounds. Please wait while we check the balance of your account. Daddy! Daddy! Hello, darling. Overdraft limit exceeded. Cash will be retained. Card will be retained. No, give me back my money, please. Customer, please wait. Bank manager will attend. Overdraft exceeded. Bank manager will attend. Overdraft exceeded. Bank manager will attend. Overdraft exceeded. Bank manager will attend. Okay, Eric, if you stay in every night, give up solid food, and supplement your income by selling off your internal organs one by one, you'll be completely debt-free by the year five million. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> whoops a daisy Sorry, mate. <laughs> you couldn't give me a leg up, could you? What are you doing? Come to take your roof away. What? Your roof. It's been repossessed. Behind on your roof payments, and I've been instructed by the plaintiffs to repossess it, sir. But you can't possibly do that. You can't just take away a roof in the middle of the night. Oh, yes, we can, sir. Hmm. Well, 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 in that case, I want to speak to the managing director. Give me his phone number. Come on. Right you are, sir. Hello, sir. Can I help you? I, I demand you get off my premises immediately. Right oh, sir. Just, just you wait. I'll get someone to make a documentary about you. This is it, Eric. You've hit rock bottom. Eric! Nearly. Eric, where's my alimony? Not now, Liz. They've just repossessed the roof. And you think that qualifies as an excuse? Well, I certainly think it's one of my better ones. Sometimes I think you invented the word unreasonable. Unreasonable? The roof to the house is gone. Eric, my life can't be dictated by your petty ups and downs. I need the money now. I've got to build a saga cockle. Oh, what? Oh, that's right. Pretend you've never heard of it. It's an Inca burial mound paying tribute to the Earth Goddess. Oh, of course, right. I can see the urgency now. Liz, our children are living in an open-top house. You'll have to wait. Come on out and some way go bobo and call her, Eric. May the Earth Goddess cast you into the den of misery. <laughs> I don't care, as long as it's got a roof! 
It's a dream. Just a dream. A simple dream. Ah! Ah, Eric. How art thou? A troubled weekend? Oh, no, not, not too bad. Despite your roofly bereavement. Oh, that! <laughs> no, no, nothing. It's only temporary. You see, it's, it's well, it, it, it's a design thing. Um, I wasn't entirely happy with it. I'll get it back soon. Yes, higher purchase payments can be such a burden, can't they? <laughs> As I say, it, it was very much a design thing. Um, how, 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 how was your weekend? And nothing special. We have the boss round for dinner. Oh, PP. When? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. How was he? Very grateful. P.P. does love a good spread. Not that I did anything very special. He had to make do with a lot à l'Americaine, au Epeignard avec son verre, au Dussault Tern. Still, we had a pleasant time, despite the hammering. Well, I'm, I'm so sorry if, if, if it um, dis disturbed you at all, but, but you, you, you know, I, I, it did have to come off, really. Don't apologize. It's a small price to pay for such a daring architectural concept as yours. You see, that's why they're so successful. That's why they've got money. That's why they've got a roof. They oil the wheels. They network. That's how you get on. That's how you succeed. It doesn't matter whether you're any good at your job, although Ray is very good at his job. And it doesn't matter if you make money for the company, although Ray actually does make a fortune for the company. The point is... The bastards have the boss around to dinner as well! What can I say, big man? Another phenomenal culinary weekend. Still, better say no more, or I'll be salivating over my desk well into the next millennium. Now, champ, your new compensation package. I've doubled your salary, tripled your pension, quadrupled your stock options, and I'm lobbing in a gold bar for the kitty. Catch you later, hero. So, that's Ray P, scene two. What's next? You've got everybody else's pay rise to discuss. That's about three minutes' work. How long does it take to say no 62 times? The only other thing is, the woman from the Potato Development Board rang to say she's coming over this weekend. Ah, the spud in a skirt. Looks like a King Edward, with none of the charisma. Here's the deal package you'll be discussing. I've booked her a hotel. All that's left is to decide what you're going to do with her on Saturday night. Lord knows. Can't inflict her on any of my friends. Maybe I'll take her down the chippy and stick her in a frying pan. Ha! Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thee. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Okay, PP, I'll come straight to the point. Um, I'm in a financial mess. I need a raise, please. Now, in cash, um, advanced uh, against the next two years' salary, this minute, or I'm probably going to have to go to prison. Ah, there. I don't think that sounds too desperate. Absolutely <laughs> not! Next! You've got 20 seconds to say your piece. Um, 20! <laughs> 15! Um... 10! How, 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 5, 4, 3, 2, 1! I want you to come to dinner. You want me to come to dinner? You want me, Chief Honcho Big Cheese Top Man, to come to dinner with you, head of the Asperger faculty at Asperger College Asperger? Yes, no, no, perhaps yes, no, if you, I, I, I don't know, yes. Can you cook? Oh, yeah, yes, 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 I, I can do, um... Okay, Feeble, make sure there's lots of potato and you've got a deal. What? what? Potato? I'll be bringing the old bat from the Potato Development Board. We'll be round Saturday, 7.30. Now, out! It's no good telling me it's 80, because it's 60. I know how many guests are coming to my own wedding, and I know it's the date originally, but then I said... Eric, what are you thinking of? You can't cook, you can't follow a recipe, you can't even clean the grill properly. Yes, I know I said 80, but then I said 60 because I fell out with Sheena, so she's not coming in. Her family said they won't come in without her, and when her mum tried to persuade Paula to tell Serena she ought to come, Paula... Don't be silly, out. Eric. Of course you can cook. Oh, Think of potatoes. Know. Anyone can cook potatoes. Yeah, Look, just, just make a list of the potato dishes you can do. Oh, uh, uh, And Dean's sister had a wound done, so even if she does come, she don't want to eat. And if you don't come Alison, in, Alison, will you shut up? I am talking to the caterers!
did you manage the menu I suggested? Um, everything is just as you order, sir. Um, you start with a cream of potato soup. Yes. Followed by the hors d'oeuvre, potato a la grec, in a tube of sauce. Uh, for the main course, we recommended the joint, which in this case... Is, is a very large potato. <laughs> served on a bed of olive oil mash and garnished with game chips. And, as sir required, the vegetable selection, potato rosti, potato puree, and pomme de terre de was Oh, completely wacky. Hmm, maybe I've overdone the potato theme. No, 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 maybe not. I'm going then. OK, Maria. And remember, don't come back at a reasonable time. Please stay out very late. And if you want to crash out in a ditch somewhere miles out of town and not ring and tell me where you are for two days, that'd be great. Right, that'll be £250. OK, uh, if you send me an invoice, I'll get a cheque in the post to you as soon as possible. No, you pay me now. All right. And uh, did you find the speakers as well? Lovely. Bye. This is it, Eric. You've got the food. You've got PP. This could be the start of something really big. Get a raise. Maybe even a promotion. Brian, will you please don't just get out of the way? Go and choose somewhere else. Oh, imagine that. A new office, away from the gentlemen's lavatories. Whole days without people popping in to ask if you've got any spare tissue. Get a new roof. Presents for the kids. Holidays! Imagine going on a holiday where you don't have to share a tent with two other families. Right. Quick polish and I'm done. <laughs> Brian, what are you doing? You've got to help me. What is it, Eric? You sound like you've just trapped your love spuds in a fire door. It's worse than that, Doc. It's like I've trapped them in a fire door and they're being pulled from the other side by an elephant. I need a chef. Now. Eric, relax. As it happens, I may be able to help you. Hmm. Brian, why do you have to put everything in your mouth? You've just put my future in your mouth! Claire, no! You know what happens when you eat peanuts? Have one of your prescription peanuts. But they're horrible. They taste of pants. Don't be silly. They taste of peanuts. Look. Mmm. Huh, they do taste of pants. Eric, this is Sophie. Very pleased to meet you. You can cook, yes? Of course. <laughs> oh, thanks, Doc. You saved my life. She's a little marvel, isn't she? I met her on Raymond Lemonk's nude cookery course in the summer. W what's the story, Sophie? Are we going to make it? I think so. I just need one more large potato. <laughs> <laughs> Right, OK, I have got one. Ah, here it is. Um, it maybe just needs a little... Um... <laughs> there we are! Right, I've just got time to get to the shops before they shut. Come on, kids, out of dog's way! Evening, Mr. Eric. Just off to the post. Right, right. Uh, in a bit of a hurry, actually. Oh, well, I won't hold you up then. Tonight, sir. Lucky dip, or do you have some regular numbers you need to get on to? No, no, just a potato. Potato? Uh, yes, I'm sure we've got... No, sorry, I've got a carrot card... No, 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 I just just want a potato. You know, the vegetable, it, 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 it's a little brown thing, as, as in Walter Raleigh. We've got a history scratch card. That's probably the nearest one to what you want. 
No, I don't, I don't want a card. Uh, forget cards. I, I just want a potato, please. You just want a potato? Yes. Without a card? Yes. Right. Uh, to be honest, sir, we don't really stock potatoes anymore. There's not much demand. But you're a grocer. Oh, certainly, sir. Otherwise, we wouldn't be allowed to sell lottery tickets. But how can you be a grocer if you haven't got any groceries? We have. Over there. One tin of pilchards. Well, I've got another one out the back. Uh, Brian! No! <laughs> I can't do this. Eric, you're desperate. You don't have a choice. Liz, I, I sense this isn't the best time to ask, but I wondered if I could borrow a potato. Look at it, Eric! Look at my sagakakopal! It should be 20 feet high and decorated with the fruits of the earth! It's urgent! I just need one potato! I'm trying to appease the earth goddess! How appeased is she gonna be by that?! I'm just gonna borrow this one. Don't touch that! Look, I desperately need it. The shop didn't have any. The guests are about to turn up. So you thought you denuded Gaia? It's just a pile of potatoes. I'll buy you some more. This is exactly why we split up, Eric. Yes, you like putting cow pats on your carpet. No shopping without a trolley. But I only want a potato. Uh, uh, come on. Uh. You have to put the money in, Daddy. Change. Change? Why have I never got any change? I've got the money. Insert uh, coin into uh, slot A by OOF. Take change C and insert tongue T into slide mechanism B. Push lever D in the direction of OOE. Pull C in the direction of H to remove G from B. Why do you have to be a rocket scientist and get a trolley out? Can I do it, Daddy? Claire, darling, if I can't do it, you certainly won't be able to. There it is. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Where are you, potatoes? Where are you? You were here the other week. Why do they have to keep changing everything? I've been looking for oven-ready lasagna for seven hours. Please help me. Potatoes. Are you talking to me? Yes, potatoes. Where can I find a potato? Right. What do you mean by potato? What do you think I mean by potato? I mean potato! Don't shout, I'm new! Now, um, hang on. Let me think. Um, potato. What is the problem? It'll be with the vegetables! Vegetables, right. When you say vegetables... Oh, forget it. Excuse me, where are the potatoes? What you want to do is... Go up here, turn left at the nectarines, keep on going till you reach pickles and condiments, then sort of come back on yourself until you see a bloke behind the wet fish counter. He'll be able to tell you where they are. <laughs> the kids! The kids! There you are. I've been looking all over for you. Here you are, dear. Wait a minute. Does this stuff contain any ease? None at all. The product is E-free, sir. What about added sugar? No. Salt? No. Starches, caramels, glutamates, additives, fertilizers, insecticides, growth enhancers, color enhancers, texture enhancers, flavor enhancers, or PVC crop protectors? No, 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 and no. Oh, okay then. Got to stall PP. What's the stuff actually made with? Mostly just peanuts. Peanuts? No. It's all right. I'm her father. <laughs> oh. 
Hello? Okay, Feeble, running a little early. Be with you in about ten minutes. T ten minutes? Um, oh, yes, yes, that's fine. Soon as you like. We're all ready for you. <laughs> so, Mrs. Bond, what's your favourite potato recipe? <laughs> Where the hell are the loose potatoes? Loose or out of stock? Only bags left, I'm afraid. Well, where are the small bags then? They are the small. We're doing seven for the price of six on those. Oh. Right. <laughs> Oi! You can't do that! Sorry, sir, we're closed now. Sorry, sir, just closing. <laughs> Less than seven items more than three. Less than four items more than one. One item or less. Eureka! Anything I've been ready in Italian. Come on, we're in a hurry here! Where's your ticket? I haven't got a ticket! You need a ticket. You have to get it from the girl at the checkout. Finally made it. One potato as requested. Please come in. You're most very welcome. Feeble, this is Mrs. Bont, chairwoman of the Potato Development Board. I am, as always, your humble servant. May God bless that venerable institution, the Potato Development Board. Amazing fact she was telling me on the way here. The one thing in life she can't stomach is potato.
So, gentlemen, we're closing in on the biggest deal ever signed by a UK company. If I might say so myself, it's a triple whammy Asperger with extra cheese, bacon, and you can come back for another if you keep the voucher. All that remains is the site visit this afternoon from Kanagawa-san. And I know he wants to say a few words about that. Kanagawa-san? Thank you, Pawa-san. We to look forward to biggest Rasbaga deal signed by Japanese company. But please understand, for us, site visit is a not melee chance for us to check in trouser pocket. <laughs> Very good. Trouser pocket. <laughs> no, we can only sign contract if we are happy with visit. We in Japan believe many things important than business. Financial property, capital investment. But above all, we believe that everything must be clean and tidy. No school, no school. I'm not going to school today. No school, no school. I'm not going to school today. Season two. No school, Season two. No school. Maria, will you get up? I'm not going to school today. Where is it? Hello? Brian, not in your mouth. Feeble, where were you? Oh, uh, so sorry, Pee I, I, I was well, um, I'm... Claire, will you be quiet? Um, sorry, Pee Pee, you, you see, the, the, the thing is... Not interested, Feeble. The Japanese are coming round at five o'clock, and I want every office cleaner than a nun's sex life. Um, yes, right, Pee Pee. Hmm, Pee Pee. Absolutely, Pee Pee. I, I, yes, no. Yeah, no, no, I do appreciate how important this is. You'd better. When we get to your office, I don't want to see so much as a gnat out of place. Because if there is, you'll be out of here faster than a curry Asperger leaving a cheetah's rectum. So get here now! Bobby, can we go to the fun fair today? No, you can't. Where is it? But Maria told me we'd go today. Yes, well, Maria told me she was an au pair. I useless! Get a move on! Brian! That's got to go back to the shop. <coughs> oh, that's horrible. Now, what am I going to say when I return it? It's fine, but the whole film now happens underwater. Oh, I wonder what it's like to be early for something. <laughs> Eric, calm down. Whatever it is, it can't be that bad. Doc, be honest with me. Rats. Not good. Well, rabies, bubonic plague, hepatitis B, Val's disease, dysentery aside, they're a complete and utter nightmare. But some people keep them as pets, don't they? You got one from the pet shop? No. The bathroom. Hmm. Well, look, I don't want to alarm you, mate, but can I give you a bit of advice? Oh, don't tell me. Relax. No. Panic. So, what I thought would be lovely, darling, is if you and Maria went out for the day. But, Daddy, you said we couldn't go out today. I know. And you said we couldn't go out with Maria. I know. And you said we... Just get in the car! Uh, just take them anywhere. It doesn't matter where, but just don't come back till this evening. I go slim now, eh? See? Eyes! What do you mean, describe it? Uh, averagely good looking? It's a rat! Morning, Mr. Eric. Just off to the post. Uh, jolly good. Well, I don't know, do I? You're the professionals. Um, large and rat like. How about that? So, so when will he be here? Could you narrow it down any less? Right, 11 o'clock, thank you. 
Come on, come on. Uh, hi, I, I seem to have lost my season ticket. I don't suppose it's been handed in at all. Right, sir. Hold on, I'll have a look. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> maybe? No. <laughs> there, that one. Yes, that's mine. Hold your horses, sir. I'll need to see some ID. But look, the picture. That's me. I've only got your word for that. But it's me! You can see that! Sorry, sir, but I will need to see some ID. A passport will do. Why would I have my passport on me? I'm going to work! All right, uh, could be something else, sir. Like a birth certificate. Do you carry a birth certificate around? No, but then I haven't lost my season ticket. Liz, it's me. Do it, do it. Liz, I need your help. Do it, do it. Liz, stop making that noise. Don't shout at me, Eric. I'm talking to you in the guise of my spirit animal. Ooh. Liz! I'm not Liz. I'm Tawny the Owl. OK, Tawny, there's a man coming round at 11. I can't really leave the office and I need someone to be there to let him in. Well, how long is it going to take? I start nesting at midday. Can't he come this evening? We've got a rat. He's not going to kill it. No, Liz, he's going to make it up a bed in the spare room. Of course he's going to kill it. Murder it? Butcher it? Eric, rats are people too. So, that's a no then, is it? Oh, do it, do it. Well, I hope you get eaten by a fox. Calm down, Eric, it'll be fine. The Japanese aren't coming till five. You don't have to be home till 11. And how long does it take to tidy an office? So he says, we're not going skiing. I said, we are going skiing. You said we was going skiing. He said, I never said nothing about skiing. And I said, well, I'm not going to Spain again. I can't stand Spain. I hate Spain. And he said, well, I hate skiing. And I said, well, I hate you. Alison! What? I think we need to tidy up. <laughs> no school, no school. Hey, yes, Hannah, I'm going to sleep. He's sleeping wakey, wakey. I'm going to beer. I need a beer. Nice, nice. No school, no school. I'm not going to Okay! Let's hide! No I'm not going <laughs> He says, go on your own. And I said, I will. I'll go on my own with Angela on my own. And he said, well, you won't be on your own if you're Evangelist. So I said, you shut your mouth, Dean Tottle. And he said, all right, all right. Keep your hair on. And I said, don't you try and be clever with me. It doesn't suit you. Do you know what I mean? Because he said he knew what I meant. And then he said, I don't know what you mean, but I knew he did. Alison! Oi! I was busy! Listen, Alison, I've got something very urgent to do at home. The Japanese are going to be here at five, so while I'm gone, will you please tidy the office, OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alison! What? I mean it! Tidy! All right! Now! I know. So he says, go on your own evangelist, see if I can. <laughs> I'm doing it. He says, I don't want to go on holiday with you anyway. And I said, suits me fine, Dean Tottle, and I packed him in. Rat. It doesn't necessarily follow that it's carrying a hundred diseases. Maybe it's one of the cleaner ones. Well, th there must be cleaner ones. There must be some who want out of the whole sewer, filth, disease lifestyle. Morning, Mr. Eric. Still off to the post? Oh, jolly good. And besides, if it is a hard-line, stick-in-the-mud traditionalist rat, it'll have moved on to somewhere much worse by now. I do hope that wasn't a rat. Oh, no, no, no. That's not a rat. <laughs> I'd be most perturbed if it were. Oh, well, perturb not. You, you see, that's just, um, well, well, that's Claire and Brian's gerbil. Gerby. The gerbil. Well, perhaps you'd better rescue him and take him inside. Yes. Right. Here, Jerby. Here, boy. Shh. Shh. No. Please, go away. Please, 
go away. <laughs> there. Perhaps you'd better pop him back in his cage before he escapes again. Yes. Drama over. It didn't break the skin. You weren't bitten. And he did feel quite clean when you were stroking him. Ah, you stroked a rat! <laughs> just, just calm down, Eric. Take a very, very deep breath in. And a very, very deep breath out. It's fine. Everything's under... Control. <sighs> yes, he's 45 minutes late, so he'll definitely be here in a quarter of an hour. You sure? Okay. You said 15 minutes last time. I can't hang around all day. So he's literally outside the house now. How can he have been outside the house half an hour ago? He still hasn't knocked on the door. Oh, at last. Thank goodness you're here. There's dozens of them up there. They all came pouring out of the loo earlier. They're great big, huge things. Tails, furry bits, teeth like paving stones. Anyway, you're here now, so I'll just leave you to it. Cup of tea. Boy, oh, because at the end of the day, those figure skaters are proper women. <coughs> um, <clears throat> I got a proper woman's sape. Um, you put that Kathy Moss on the ice. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I, and a lot of people like me, um, will be physically sick. Uh, well, she ain't a proper woman. Um, <clears throat> She's a twiglet. Um, <clears throat> um, and who wants a twiglet um, in a uh, world figure skating uh, championships? Uh, Bob, look at the time. Oh, blimey, I had no idea it was so late. Oh, excuse me. No wonder I was so hungry. Yeah. Oh, I'll have a cup of tea with this. Of course, the funny thing is, <clears throat> these models put themselves through all that no chocolate and lots of rhubarb stuff. But at the end of the day, you ask any man to choose between Nomi Campbell and the driver of the German female bobsleigh team, and I bet it'll be Heidi Fackenbacker every time. Look! Rats! Rats! Right, well, <laughs> can't stop here chatting to you all day. Thank you. I've got to finish my dinner. Alison? Yes? It's me. So? How's the tidying going? All right. Look, I've just had a thought. We can put the most recent files into the filing cabinet, say, all the current contracts and anything to do with the field management review. Then you can take the closed file down to the archive. Don't you go, Mrs. Davies, I think it's so sad. It's been loaded with stuff. Stop! 
started. Well, I've just eaten. You can't run around after you've eaten. You end up with heartburn. Look, I've got to get back to the office. Please, do something now. All right, all right. <clears throat> Hello? I'll be right round. What are you doing? I've got an emergency. So what do you call this then? Look, look, the floor's moving. I know. I reckon you want to get someone round. No school, no school. We're all going to school today. Have you been drinking, madam? Yes, since I was twelve. If you'd care to blow into this. Right. I must ask you to accompany me to the station. Okay. But I take my own car, see? Hey, come back! All that aggro for a man with a cricket bat. Well, I've got a cricket bat. Right, you're first! Supremacist! Eric, I can't allow you to harm another soul. I can't allow you to destroy one of Gaia's beautiful creatures. Ah! It bit me! Stamp on it, Caleb! Stamp on it, Eric! Do something! <laughs> P.P., are you tidy yet? Oh, <laughs> nearly. Good, because the Japanese have brought it forward now. They'll be here at four o'clock.
okay? So you've got no keys, no money, no clothes, you're filthy, you smell like a tramp convention, and in 20 minutes you'll be meeting the cleanest man in Japan. See? There's no reason to panic. <laughs> Hop in, mate. What happened to you? You look like you fell into a sewer. Oh, Doc, it's been a nightmare. In ten minutes, I'm meeting some Japanese hygiene nut. And look at me. I look like Mr. Incontinence. Eric, relax. There's always a solution. So, all that's left is our little shufti down the corridor. Plain and tidy. Yes. Let's hope so. This is our top man, Ray Perfect. Konnichiwa! Go for it, big man. Hajimamashite! Watashi wa renan nihon ni keremas! Sensu Osaka to Kyoto no shisha ni ikimas! Japanese! Very good! Office! Klenatani! Very, very good! I love you, champ. Now stay, 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 boy. You stupid animal! Konnichiwa. Clean and tidy. God. Just get it out. Just get it out. Out you go, gone. Um, excuse me. I think you might have dropped something. No! Konnichiwag. Yes! Plain and tidy! Putty! <laughs> Alison! I asked you to tidy the office! What's the problem? Tidy in it? And this is data. Alright, mate. man in the world.
Ray Perfect. And what a lovely way to reach 50. For how many did your dad get? He got 70. My father has 50 with 6 balls and 2 sixes scored off only 18 balls at an average rate of 2.777 recurring per stroke. How many do you think Claire and Brian's daddy will get? He will get loads. Runs or laughs. <laughs> and now a new builder coming off from the car park end. It's young Bradley Frost. That's extraordinary. Right-handed, left-handed, six or four, the grace of Nureyev and the raw animal power of the North American bison. Oh, yuck. Why is it the only piece of cricket gear that really needs cleaning never gets a wash? Daddy, you are going to score lots of runs this year, aren't you? I don't believe it. All the bats have gone. Yeah. Thank you. And so ends an extraordinary innings. Caught and bowled by young Bradley Frost. Such a generous person, appealing to women with his softness and sensitivity. And yet also a hero to other men with his masculine sporting prowess. Daddy, you will score lots of runs, won't you? Promise me. I don't know, Claire. I haven't even got a bat. How many runs am I going to score when my only offensive weapon is this box? Oh... Brian! And next is about Eric, Eric Feeble. <laughs> Let the cabaret begin. Come on, Daddy. For our sake. Oh, oh. oh no, please. My real daddy. <laughs> it was only a nightmare. <laughs> but it did really happen. Honestly, all Maria had to do was wash my cricket shirt. But she did put it in the machine, Daddy. I saw her. And what cycle did she put it on? Destroy? Does this mean that you won't be able to play on Saturday? Of course I'll be able to play, darling. I can wear a different shirt. Oh, no, no, I'll, I'll definitely be playing. So you are definitely, definitely, definitely playing? <laughs> Claire, don't worry, darling. I'm not going to drop out and let you down and let the school down. I would never do that. Oh, good. Y you do want me to play, don't you? Oh, y yes, Daddy. Um, it's just that you do know that the kiddie with the thick glasses is bowling again this year, don't you? You, you know, I wonder if, if I can play with this shirt. Maybe I shouldn't play. It's up to you, Daddy. Hmm, do, do you know, I, I think I'll give it a miss. OK, Daddy. <laughs> So this would be like a chilling out area where the hedgehogs could gather. I'm thinking music in the background, some ambient stuff. The hedgehogs will have access to communal garden areas and a whole range of leisure activities. Uh, things to climb over, water features, a little table football. It's perfect, Caleb. It'll be more than a sanctuary for hedgehogs. Somewhere they can mature as individuals. Mrs Snapes, it's Eric Feeble, just ringing about the cricket on Saturday. Oh, don't mention the cricket! People dropping out one after another. Oh dear, terrible, yes, I... I thought we weren't going to be able to get a team together and were depending on the proceeds of the game. Otherwise, our minibus for the elderly appeal goes completely up the spout. Oh dear, terrible, yes, I... But thankfully, I have now got 11 players. 
As long as you're not going to drop out. <laughs> I mean, it's for charity. Otherwise, the old folks won't get their minibus. And we don't want that, do we? Yes, we do. If it is going to be like last year, and the kiddie with the thick glasses will bowl at you and you will be out first ball, and all the other children will laugh and point. But I might not be out first ball this year, darling. But you are rubbish. Well, well admittedly, last year I, I didn't do ever so well. What about the year before that? Well, again, I, I, I was a little bit unlucky. And what about the year before that and the year before that? I, I don't really remember. Oh, oh, you, you've kept a scrapbook. And a s score book. And here is a collage Brian and I have done. It is called The Shame. <laughs> this year, I won't let you down. This year, I'm going to be good. This year, you're going to be able to point me out to your friends and say, That's my dad, and he makes me proud. Take a few lessons. That's the answer. You've done it before. You learn to drive. This'll be even easier. This time, there won't be a homicidal French trucker chasing around the M25 because he smashed his wing mirror. Ah, Eric, how art thou? Returning something to Mother Care? No, 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 no. Just off to cricket practice. Are we to understand that you will be playing in the match on Saturday? Oh, definitely. Yes. Wouldn't miss it for the world. And neither would we. We all enjoyed your cameo last year so much. Oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, looking back, I, I, I think I, I was a bit unlucky. Bold first ball by a partially sighted eight-year-old. Unlucky indeed. <laughs> well, you know how it is. You, you can't go out there and completely humiliate the poor child. Instead of which you completely humiliated your own. How selfless. Oh, Claire and Brian weren't humiliated. I mean, I mean, so their dad didn't do too well at cricket. It's, it's, it's hardly something to be ashamed of. And the school's raising all the money for it. Oh, lovely to have a minibus. So much better than taking the train. Oh, I haven't got the patience for the train. So slow. Another car? So, what's the problem? Well, it, it's generally uh, in the area of, of um, making contact with the ball. And what's the problem with that? Um, I can't. And this is against what kind of bowling? Fast? Yes. Medium? Uh, yes. Slow? Yes. Off break? Uh, yes. Leg break? Yes. Googly? Yes. Chinaman? Yes. Left arm? Yes. Right arm? Uh, underarm, overarm, any arm, really. Right, well, let me just chuck you down a few and we can have a look at your technique. <laughs> Slower than that. <laughs> a, bit, a bit slower still? Not really. Short of carrying the ball towards you in my hand and laying it on the ground in front of you. Um, could, could we try that? collecting for a shelter for a disadvantaged group. So who's that? Single mums, orphans, asylum seekers? They're all those rolled into one. They're actually known by the rather demeaning name of hedgehogs. This is hedgehog of I just don't understand, Doc. The bowler's got four inches of perspex in front of his face. By the time the ball gets to me, it's barely moving, and I still can't even touch it. Oh. Oh. Well, there's nothing wrong with your reflexes. I reckon it's our old fruity bed partner, Stress. You're just getting so worked up about it you can't function properly. You need to relax. Get things in perspective. 
realize it's only a game. But it's not. It's more than that. For the kids, it means being ashamed of their own father. I'm sure they're not ashamed of you. Last year, Claire pretended to be an orphan. How much more ashamed can you be? Listen, meet. I could do what I normally do and prescribe you a relaxant, but I can't think of many top sportsmen whose performances are improved by being sedated. How about this? Piet von Arnhem, sports psychologist. Oh, just give him a call, mention my name, he'll fit you in quicker than you can say, intimate bed bath. Monsieur Rolladay. And Eric, in the meantime, relax. So what's the problem? I need the money for my sanctuary now! Please, calm down. There are a few things I want clarified first. Your loan application form wasn't entirely clear. I answered all the questions. Yes, but not always entirely comprehensibly. Name. You put Mkule Makale Mamimu Fma, but your name is Liz Feeble. My Western name is Liz Feeble, yes. And that's the name your account is in? No, my account's in the name Oloshawalilo. Which is? The name of my spirit. Hmm. Now, date of birth. 13 BC. That can't be right. It is. It's when I was first born. I'm not with you. You don't believe in reincarnation? Not for the purposes of getting a loan, no. I'm sorry. I can't sacrifice my beliefs just to appease some Western capitalist whim. Well, it's a bit more than a whim. You might find it makes things rather difficult for you. For example, as a self-employed person, you might find yourself getting a request for 2,000 years of accounts. <laughs> It's because your daddy's scared of our bowling. No, it's not. It's... Yes, it is. So, what do I get? Whatever you want. Hey, the bird. All right, then. Five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yuck, yuck. Poor boy, yuck. Now you have done a kiss, Brian will do the bowling. Yes? I've changed my mind. Ha, 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 ha. Your problem is that you are so full of the negative thoughts. You're expecting to get naught, so you do get naught. I want to be starting by getting you to think back through your life to occasions in the past when you have been successful. Winner. Right. It can be anything from any period of your life. Right. You will tell me as soon as you have something? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, Mr. Feeble. Let's not be worrying about the past. Let's try working on the future. Okay, visualize yourself being successful on Saturday. Oh, right. Good. So just relax and close your eyes. And try and picture the scene on Saturday. You are walking out to the wicket. You are totally focused. Yes, it's a beautiful day, the sun is shining, you are feeling loose and relaxed. I'm very relaxed. Yeah. You can see the crowd and you're happy and confident with them being there. The bowler runs up and bowls. And as the ball comes towards you, you just know that you're going to hit that ball. Totally focused. I'm going to hit the ball. As it comes towards you, it's really big. You can't miss it. I can't miss it. Your back moves towards the ball. Yes. You're totally, totally, totally focused. Yes. And what's happened? I'm out for a duck. Oh. Dear God, we are just ringing to say we are a bit worried about the cricket because Daddy is rubbish. So will you please, 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 please make sure that he's not rubbish and that he hits the ball? Thank you. Bye. Ah, hello, Brian. 
Hello, Claire. Nice to see you here. We have been doing a prayer. Oh, that's splendid. I'm sure that whatever you ask for, God will help out. We have asked him to help our daddy hit the ball on Saturday. Of course, God is very busy at the moment. Well, I seem to be totally focused, all right. Totally focused on failure. <gasps> Eric, I need money. Ten thousand pounds. No. I haven't got ten thousand pounds. It's urgent, Eric. Lives are at stake. Whose lives? Uh, hedgehog lives. The bank refused to give me the money for my hedgehog sanctuary. Oh, what a surprise! And why do you think that is? Because they, in common with the rest of this country, are extremely speciesist. Because it's a stupid idea. Of all your harebrained schemes, I put it right up there with adopt a quarry and women against fascist representations of women on duvet covers. So that's a no, is it? Yes. You are so selfish. You never do anything to help anyone but yourself. For your information, in order to secure the purchase of a minibus for the elderly, I am going to humiliate myself in front of the entire community, which is a damn sight more than you've ever done. I'm not talking about a bunch of old stiffs, Eric. I'm talking about a real charity. Look, Eric. Feel him. Touch him. Get that thing away from me. It's disgusting. They're flea-ridden. They're rancid. They're vermin. If I donate money for hedgehogs, it'll be to pest control to have them wiped out. How dare you! Oh, my God, what have I done? You're totally, totally, totally focused. <laughs> Go on, Mickey. Double top for the match. 520! And Claire, what is your news? My daddy was out for nothing. And what do we say to Claire now, children? We laugh and point, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Ask him. <laughs> and today's game should provide the final payment for the minibus. We really can't thank you enough. You've all been so kind. Yes, it's amazing how people help out. They give up their time, their money, and in one case, even their dignity. Do you want some tea? Mm, me neither. I had my nightmare about the cricket again last night. Only this time, Daddy was out for minus ten. What a lovely day! Don't you just wake up some days and think, yes, oh yes! You have not forgotten that it is the cricket today. Nope. And you have not forgotten that the kiddie with the thick glasses will bowl at you. Nope, absolutely not. You are very happy. Uh, that's because I am totally focused and I'm totally looking forward to it. Come on, we don't want to be late. Ryan, I think he is having a nervous breakage. <laughs> Of course, I don't really like cricket. No one me. It's a bit slow, isn't it? Ah, Mr Feeble. The old people are so excited about their minibus. I'm so pleased you're playing. And so are we. Aren't we, kids? Yes. <laughs> Doesn't seem like a man who's about to humiliate his family for generations to come. Are you going to bail out Mr. Feeble again? Yeah. Oh, oh Bradley! Robert Nunkworth, coming in to bell. Ah, wonderful. And that is 100, just delicious. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. So how many did your dad get this year? He got twenty-seven. How many do you think Brian and Claire's daddy will get? He will get loads. Runs or laughs. <laughs> Effortless, splendid, wonderful. Well, it, it was a. You, you, you can't describe something like that. As you can see, it's been specially designed for senior citizens. There are some marvelous features. Personalized temperature gauges. It goes all the way up to a hundred and five degrees and all the way down to eighty-nine. There's a personalized temperature holder on the back of every seat. I'll help her. And there's even an extra supply of zipper frames. Oh. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I know neither of us can bear to be parted. We don't have the money to realize our sanctuary dream, and it's right for all of us that you go back. No, Simba, don't speak. Just remember. And now a new bowler coming on from the school playground end. It's young Bradley Frost. Oh, Daddy. And that, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I'm, I'm just, just lost, lost for words. What were you doing in the Zimmer compartment? We were being stowaways. We thought we could go where no one will laugh and point at us. Oh, but darling, no one's going to laugh and point at you. <laughs> <laughs> And he's running. This is quite incredible. Yeah. I saw the great cadre at Lords at 56. I, I saw both of at Hedigley at 81. Now, I've seen a fella called Perfect. Gordon Bell by young Bradley is dead. I so envy you being married to him. And as a happily married man with six children, even I find him alluring. And next into that, Eric Feeble. Look, kids. Whatever's gone before, it's going to change from now. It is. I promise you. Eric, Eric a feeble. feeble. Oh, Daddy, you mustn't go. Trust me. So here, here comes Eric, Eric Feeble. feeble. And as the game's almost over, will the senior the citizens, citizens please board, board the minibus? Mini totally, totally. Totally focused. Come on, Daddy, you are sake. Daddy? You will score lots of runs, won't you? Promise me. The shame. And all the other children will love and point. Please, Daddy. Yes, I've done it. I've done it. Oh, thank you. I hit the ball. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you, thank you. Claire, darling, darling, come here, Brian. That's my Daddy, and he made.
please come out of there. Oh, I, my head is big. I don't care if you come back drunk at five in the morning, but if you pass out in the bathroom, I have to wash at the kitchen sink. And believe you me, it's no fun trying to shave with a potato peeler. And I would quite like to go to the loo before I go to work. Oh. <gasps> Maria. <gasps> Well, you won't get any sympathy from me. Of all your cheap shot attempts at getting drunk, last night's was the cheapest. <laughs> Maria, we now have a cue. We're thinking of getting crash barriers to control the crowds. Oh, Bri Brian, come, what, what have you got in your mouth? Come, come in. That's my shaving cream, Brian. I was looking for that. Not only did Daddy have to shave with a potato peeler, but he had to lather up with cottage cheese. Poor Daddy. Oh. I will get her out of the bathroom, darling. I promise. Even if I have to douse myself in alcohol and act as bait. It is not that. Well, what is it then, darling? I need to dress up as Marie Antoinette for my school project. Well, that's all right. With a long dress, jewellery, a wig, a lace collar and a beautiful sparkling parasol. I think, I think we can manage that. Today. Right. Um, why, why what didn't you tell me before, darling? I forgot. You see, the trouble is I've got a very important day at work and there's a big presentation I've got to go to. That's all right, Daddy. I understand if you've got something more important to do. Quickly, then. Thank you, Daddy. There. What do you think? It's lovely. Great. Oh, please. I need world's biggest fizzy pill. I won't be a sec. Just got to use the loo. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Very. Just off to the post in my brand new buggy. Joey, good. Oh, silly me. I've forgotten the instructions. It's magnificent, big man. Tis a mere trifle. Trifle? It's an absolute triple-tiered arseburger of a dessert with extra custard, cream and Tia Maria cascading down the side from a marzipan fountain. When they see this model at the presentation this afternoon, they'll give us the contract before you can say, I love Ray. It doth flattereth me that you think my meager contribution could enhance our company's prospects so. With you at the helm, Top Gun, how can we fail? But we must be sure that the other departments who must be present are all equally well prepared as I. You mean feeble, don't you? Tis true, my goodly neighbour doth give me some cause for concern. Quite right. Do you want me to fire him? Hmm. Ha! <laughs> just joking. But I will if you want. No, no, no. I would just like to be assured that he be equipped with all of the relevant information, lest I need to turn to him for support. Leave it to me. Feeble will be as good as gold, because if he's not... <laughs> I really, really need a costume. The one Daddy made was rubbish. Uh... Please? <laughs> you spend most of your life clanking around like a walking piggy bank. But you never have change when you need it. Aha! I've got a ten percent apiece. I'm all right. Oh, I don't think that'll work. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. So, 
Uh, do you have your boned bodice uh, trimmed with Flemish lace? We say so. And your powdered pompadour are made from the hair of thoroughbred Arab stallions and hand-knotted in the royal perrucarie. We say so. Alors, je présente à Marie Antoinette. Is jewelry. But I haven't got a wig. It should be powdered. Uh. There is Mary Twatinetti. Mm. Okay, we try something else. Thank you, Maria. Authentic. Exquisite! Expensive! Bye! Dites à moi, je le redis, vos jolies turquoises et merelues. Vous la genre du tata. Would you like some cake? <coughs> I'm just going out for a moment. <coughs> Half a centimeter to the left. Hmm. And 1730 seconds of a centimeter forward. Magnificent. Now, turn on the fountains. And he says, I'll pour grapefruit. And I said, of course, pour grapefruit. So he goes to get it, and I'm sitting there, and I keep on sitting there. And 20 minutes later, I'm still sitting there. There's no pour grapefruit. And I think, where's my pour grapefruit? So I shout out, Oi, Dean Tottenham, where's my pour grapefruit? So I get to the bar and no wonder he has got my poor grapefruit because there's this blonde all over him and I said, who's she then? And he said, no one. And I said, she's not no one. And he said, she's just someone. And I said, well, if she's someone, she's not no one, is she? Alison, what is going on? There's a conga class outside the gents. They're doing building work. It's the only loo in use in the whole place. Well, why wasn't I told? They sent a memo round three weeks ago. It went to every secretary to pass on to each departmental head. But you didn't pass it on. So I said, don't tell me she's no one when you've already said she's someone. Hi. Sorry to butt in like this. It's just that I really need to go to the loo and I wondered if I could... Sorry, mate. I've been waiting 40 minutes. I'm pretty desperate myself. Ah, Derek. Sorry to butt in like this. It's just I've got loads to do. Haven't we all? Graham, you, you don't mind, do you? It's just I quite need to go to the loo. We all do. Get to the back of the queue. He's just barged in. Well, why can't I barge in? I was saving a place for him. Well, he's barging in too. No, he's not. I was saving a place for him. Well, how could you be saving a place for him? You, you weren't even in the queue. He was, because I was saving a place for him. Well, that's ridiculous. That means another ten people could come along and barge in claiming you were saving a place for them. What's happening? He, he was, was saving, saving a place, place for us! us. Right. Got the instructions? Oh, silly thing. You've forgotten your spectacles. But, Maria, the dress is exactly the same as Heather's. So? But the parasol is exactly the same as Heather's. So? Uh, and the wig is exactly the same as Heather's. Oh, please shut up your face, or I really make you look like Mary Twatinetti, and I chop your head off! Harlot, vagabond, basest of vile blackguards, look at what you've done! <laughs> 
stealing the clothes off the back of an eight-year-old, albeit a prodigious and mature one with an IQ of 174. You're lucky I haven't brought Her Majesty's Constabulary with me. A bet on's at the ready. What have you got to say for yourself? Hey, the f*** you! Oh, Dipek, I wanted to ask you something about the presentation this afternoon. Um, excuse me, gentlemen, can we cut out the chat? We're verging on a medical situation here. So I said maybe she is no one, but you want to be careful, Dean Tothill, or I might pack you in. And he said, you ain't going to pack me in. And I said, well, I could pack you in. And he said, but you ain't going to pack me in, are you? And I said, well, I haven't packed you in, but I could pack you in if I wanted. <gasps> Dino. Ali. Come to say sorry. I never done nothing. Snogging a blonde in a nightclub. That's not nothing. Look, I didn't do nothing with that blonde. She was just like, hello, Dino. And I'm like, uh. And she's like, wallop. And I'm like, eh? And then you're like, oh, Dino. That is not what I saw, Dean Tothill. She may have been like, hello, Dino. But you was like, ooh, ooh. And then you was both like, <laughs> stop it, stop it. I didn't come here to argue about the other night. I come to give you this. Oh, Dino. Read what it says on it. Be my cutie kitty cat. Oh, Dino, it's like poetry is beautiful. It's a little kitten. It's China, but you can still stroke him. Yep, that's it. Great. Well done. Come on, Alan, you can do it. So you won't pack me in? Of course not. How could I after something as beautiful as this? And you was just being stupid. Well, seeing you with that blonde, it was horrible. I mean, you wouldn't like it if it was me with another man, would you? But that wouldn't happen, would it? You're trying to say I'm not attractive? No, I'm just saying a, a bloke wouldn't come up to you like that in a nightclub. So you're saying I'm not attractive? No, I'm just saying it's different for me and you. Yeah, because you're God's gift and I couldn't get a date in a farmyard. There goes the chain! Wash those hands, don't overdo it, you're a man! Now the bolt! Gentlemen, I may be some time. <laughs> no! Right. Got the instructions. Got me spectacles. Oh, wrong spectacles. I will destroy. Vengeance shall be mine. Good morning. I'm somewhat concerned about the welfare of two young children next door. They appear to be in the care of a delinquent nanny. Well, imagine pure evil with a nose ring and a Portuguese accent. How would you like it if someone said you couldn't even get picked up by a piglet? Well, I'm not coming out. Not till he says sorry. Please, can you say sorry? I've got to get in there. I ain't saying sorry. I've never done nothing. Couldn't you just pretend to be sorry? Why should I? He is sorry, Alison. He just said he was sorry, but it was quite quiet, so you probably didn't hear it. I never said that. I ain't sorry. I heard that! <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to get a drink. Do you want one? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> OK, Eric, don't panic. You live in one of the world's great metropolises. There must be somewhere you can go for a pee. The sluice gates. After three. One. Two. Feeble? <gasps> oh, yes, Pee Pee. I'm doing an underwear check, Feeble. What? It's a phrase. It means checking everything's in order where it matters most. Oh, I see. Yes, right. I'm sure I don't need to remind you what an absolute flame grilled ass burger of a deal we have in prospect. 
Are you all set? Oh, yes, yes. I've got the plans of the reservoir, the environmental impact reports, the technical specifications, the costings, the bill of quantities, all the facts and figures. It's, it's all there. Well, let's have a look. Um, as I say, they're there, they're there, they're there. Well, pass them over. Um, I think they're nearer to you. But they're on your desk. Yes, but the thing is, I'd have to reach over my computer, which means I'd have to bend my arm. So, strictly speaking, as the uh, crow flies, you are probably nearer. It's at least equal. Is there something wrong with you, Feeble? No, nothing. Uh, it's just nerves. Don't be late. Ow! I got something in my eye. Yes, there's an eyelash just sticking out at the corner of your left eye. Haven't got it out, have I? No, you've just turned it round. You get it out. Um. Well, come on then. W wouldn't you rather someone else did it? No, I asked you, you imbecile. Just get it out. <laughs> ah! What are you doing with your tongue? Please, no, sorry. It's, it's a new technique. I read it in a book. Sorry. Get a grip, feeble. I'm trying. And give me that mug. You can use the gents like everyone else. <laughs> right. Instructions. The right spectacles. To turn the cooker on. Oh, wrong instructions. Billy? Oh no! Is head of the doggy? You said that 14 cans ago. I ought to be going. Baby, via the bathroom. <laughs> Hello. Are you clear? Maria! Oh, sorry. what is it now? There is a man to see you. Aye, aye, aye. And he is called, uh, Mr. Social Worker. Kevin, you can't change a £20 note, can you? I'm, I'm going to use the station loo on my way to the presentation, and I need 20 pence. Sorry, matey. You haven't got change. I need a 20 pence piece. Sorry. 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 Alan, please. I've got a bladder the size of Norway. Well, I've got a 20p, but that's all. It doesn't matter. I think she will be ready for you in one minute. Oh, hello. Come in. Right. First of all, I'd like to ask Claire a few questions. There's a very strong smell of beer in here. Is there? I know smell. So, Claire, what's it like when Maria looks after you? Um, it is good because she leaves us on our own and we can do whatever we want. I give them space to help them mature, but I around if they need me. There really is a very strong smell of beer. Is next door. They have home kit brewery. So, Maria goes out and leaves you on your own? Oh no, she's in the house. <laughs> because she does not get up till four o'clock in the afternoon. Like I said before, I, I give them space and... I'm talking to Claire. I'm sorry, but there is a smell of beer coming from this house. I'm going to have to open a window. Shh! He is sculpture. He's, he's by very interesting young artist. He is named Mr. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the other child? The boy? Uh, you don't know. I do. He is uh, on holiday. Brian, you're back. How was your holiday? <laughs> There's a hairdryer in his mouth. Right, that's it. Maria Gonzalez, I don't believe you're a fit person to care for children. I am, I am. a very good person. i very religious. I have a priest visiting so he can set a good example to the children. I've just been sick all down the stairs. Can I see your ticket? I just want to use the loo. Ticket. This is becoming the most expensive pee in history. OK, give me a ticket. Where to? Anywhere. Near a station. Nearest which way? Doesn't matter. Either way. Return or single? 
Look, just give me the cheapest ticket in either direction. I just want to go to the loo. Uh, cheapest is the return to Cannon Street. Fine, give me a return to Cannon Street. When are you coming back? What? What ticket it is depends on when you're coming back. But I'm not coming back. <laughs> Make your mind up. So, you want a single. Look, you idiot. I just want a ticket to get me onto the platform. I don't care what it costs, when it's for, where it's to. All right, you can have a single to Inverness. What? Who's the idiot now? <laughs> What's wrong with the gents? Some moron jammed it this morning with a ten per se apiece. Worker. Don't worry, we're just going to find your daddy. Now, instructions, spectacles, right spectacles, right instructions, ready to go. This is Gordon Loder, the man we have to impress. Ah, welcome. I hope my humble attempt to earn your patronage will be received favorably. You're too modest, Titan. Believe me, Gordon, when you see what Ray's got for you backstage, you won't be able to resist it. <laughs> People, we're starting in three minutes. I'm just going to the loop. Ah, oh, at last. <laughs> Oh, no. No, just relax, Eric. Don't get into that whole thing of not being able to go when someone's standing next to you. It's only Ray. Don't be intimidated by him. It's just a question of concentrating on your own game and ignoring what everybody else is doing. Think of glow. Think of water. <laughs> Think of Ray Perfect standing next to you, making you look like a totally inadequate human being. Cut your losses. Pretend you're finished and pop back when he's gone. Come then, Eric. Our destiny awaits. Right, yes. People, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm just going to the loo. But you've just been. No, but I've got to go again. We're ready to start. So am I. Oh, reservoir. Water for people, water that gusheth forth from firemen's hoses, that poureth from our bath taps, that drip, drip, drips in mighty industrial complexes. What would our lives be without millions and millions of gallons of water? And who better to satisfy people's thirst for water, more water, and yet more water, than power enterprises? <laughs> But I don't understand. Why do we have to find my daddy? There's nothing to worry about. Our state-of-the-art design features a hydro-powered water purification system where the power of flowing water will be used to clean the water itself. Water working with water to make better, purer water. Ahem! I'm sorry. But if there is nothing to worry about, then why won't you tell me why we have to see him? Look, I just want to meet your daddy, get to know him, find out what he's like. The pumping, pouring, pounding, splashing, crashing, gushing splendor that is H2O. <laughs> oh! I think he's just fainted. I'll get him a glass of water. No, no, please. I'll be fine. But I can tell you what my daddy is like. He is very nice and he is a very good father and he is very, very responsible. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the New London Reservoir. Oh...
So, the aim is for each team to make their way as fast as possible to the target X, capture it, and raise their departmental flag. The first team to raise their flag wins, whoever that might be, he said, looking at Ray Perfect and Sales. It's not only about shooting someone in the face with a splat gun, although, let's face it, that should be enough for anyone. It's also about building team spirit, from sales to accounts and all the way down to data. So I says to him, you listen to me, Dean Tothill, I want to buy a new phone. And he says, why do you want to buy a new phone? And I said, because it's got lots of features. And he said, your old phone's got lots of features. And I said, yeah, but they're old features because there's no old phone. The new phone's got new features. Oh, hold on, I've got another call. Yeah? Alison, I'm going to be late for the meeting. So if PP asks where I am, make an excuse. Um, tell him my... Yeah, bye. No, Alison, I haven't told you what the excuse is yet. I'm not stupid. I can think of an excuse. Yes, well, I remember the last two excuses you made on my behalf. Um, his mother's died and his mother's died again. Yeah, well... Data! Sorry? And now I'd like to introduce the man who's going to oversee our team-building work today. Media and corporate guru, author of million-selling books such as A Brief History of Team, Once Upon a Team in America, and his 12-volume masterpiece, A Dance to the Music of Team, Mr. Bizant Duvall. Team. Team. Team, 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 team. Team! Team! Oh, but why do we have to go to Mummy's? We want to stay at home. But you can't, darling. Maria's doing her community service today, so there's no one to look after you. But we hate going to Mummy's. She makes us do stupid things. What you have to understand, darling, is that Mummy has a very different lifestyle to us. She has all her new age interests, and certainly they're not the kinds of things we do, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're stupid. It's just a coincidence. How long do we have to be there for? Not long. I'm in a team with Alison, which means, in paintballing terms, we've got a life expectancy of about two and a half minutes. I'll come and pick you up very soon. How soon? Tragically sooner than is good for my career. Team! What is the meaning of team? What is the definition of team? What is team all about? Put simply, team is a transpersonal planned relationship strategy deployed to architect win-win scenarios in the business environment. But you know, there's an even better definition of team. You know what it is? It's this. Team. Thank you. Okay, you ready to play paintball? Sales, let me hear you! Oh! Uh, Counts, let me hear you! Data! Oh, I said it's got a SIM card insertion. And he said, what's a SIM card insertion? And I said, what do you think a SIM card insertion is? Data! It's where you insert your SIM card. Data! What? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, whoa! So, you've got your politically correct new action man who shoots lots of people but grieves for them afterwards? And Claire, you got your prescription sandwiches, yeah? Right, say goodbye to your daddy. Bye bye, daddy. Give daddy a kiss. That's it, kids, no, that's enough, yes, yes, off, no, no, get, get off, that's it, finished. Come to mummy! Go to mummy. Go on. And again. And again. So I'll come and pick you up as soon as I can. OK, right. I'm going to go now. <laughs> On the phone. I pay our American friend $50,000 a day so you can go out and conquer worlds and you're trying to break the world record for inane chatter. Sorry, sir. I was, I, I was busy. I'm sorry. And where was Feeble? Oh, he, he, uh, he, 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 he fell over for, um, something in his, in his garden yesterday. Uh, this morning he fell over yesterday, but, but this morning it was really bad because it was still there and I think he fell over. In. 
Ah, Abbott, Costello's already here. Um, yes, P.P., sorry, I'm... Shut up! What happened to you this morning? Well, uh, didn't Alison tell you? Yes, but you know what it's like with a great comedy routine. You can listen to it more than once. Well, it's, um, it's exactly as Alison said. Home, home on the range. Well, obviously, I was, um, I was on the range. Uh, no, at home. In the English country garden. In the garden. You look sweet upon a sea. And, and there was a daisy. No, no, there were two people... Oh, my mother died. Again. It was a bicycle. You fell over it. Pathetic. This department is pathetic. You can't even cook up a decent story between you. You've got as much sense of teamwork as an Italian government. It's not my fault. He made me do it. No, she's lying. I I don't give a double arse burger with bacon and club sauce. This paintball competition is your last chance. Unless I see an improvement the size of the Indian subcontinent, unless I see a transformation bigger than the one in Cinderella, unless, in short, I see the two of you running up that flag at the paintball, the party is over. Data, the well-known comedy club, will be closing its doors and you two gigglers will be packed off to work for someone who really knows the meaning of teamwork. (laughs) <laughs> Just coming, dear. Hello, dear. Come to do your community business. What I have to do? Oh, you can help me to the post box. Oh, no! This stay forever! I'll tell you what. Once we've posted my letter, we'll come home and have a nice glass of sherry. Drink! Oh, come on, come on, where you wait? And I said, on this phone, you can encrypt your messages left. And he said, you don't need to encrypt your messages left. And I said, I might want to encrypt my messages left. What about when I'm talking to Chanel at left? You meant to be going left. Yes, well, I don't think that's a very good idea. Well, you should have turned left earlier. And he said, why would you want to encrypt your message? Alison. I'm busy. We're never going to get there unless you start navigating properly. Put that phone down. You're just jealous. I'm... What? My new phone. Top of the range. It's good. SIM card insertion. Smart button. One touch turbo dialing. Just stop waving that thing at me and give me an instruction. Left. So, first, I thought we'd have a bit of a sing-song. Oh, <gasps> brilliant. Can we sing penguin bottles hanging on the wall? Penguin bottles hanging on the wall. Uh, no, we're going to learn a new song. Oh, no, not one of your droney ones. It's not droney, it's Tibetan, and it's very beautiful. I thought, Kyongy. What about... You mean... Mimi? Yeah. Good. Okay, kids, this is a lovely little folk song, and it describes what happens when a man wakes up in a mountain village one morning and discovers he's got the head of a fish. Is it very long? No, Claire, it's quite short, by Tibetan standards. 23 verses. And I said it only had cool weight and cool holding, didn't have cool bar on. Have you really got any idea at all where we are? Yeah, it's somewhere around here. Oh, I see. Somewhere in the Norfolk, Suffolk, East Midlands, Lincolnshire region. Well, if you don't like my navigating, you can ask someone else. Oh, um, excuse me. Uh, you don't know where Swadle Coxley is, do you? Uh, th- the paintball park? Yes, certainly. Keep going for about 200 yards past the windmill, take the first left, then third on the right, and follow the left-hand fork and you're there. Brilliant, thank you. Mr Johnson, come back. It's time for your medication. <laughs> So, Caleb will sing each line and then you two can try it. So 
So I want to see you out there being a team. Put simply, I want to see cross-motivational patterns of connective bilateration. Quick! And it's when to call waiting, call hiding, Alison. call barring, call meeting. Alison. You've got Paul Divert, Alex Divert, Paul Divert, Alison. Alison. Card. Here! I was busy! Give me that back! I'm now confiscating your phone! Don't you dare! That's not just a phone! It's a vital organ! In other words, go out there, work together, be a team. Give me that! Not till after the paintball! Okay, and now let's just test those weapons. Accounts? Sales. And data. Come on, come on! I need drinky drink. Perhaps you like I take leather for you. Oh no, dear. I'd rather post it myself. And they say it's good we keep old people alive. Who will blow accounts away? Celebrate with Chardonnay. Who will split the data bunch? Then have caviar for lunch. Who's team? Race team, super sales team. We are all from the accounts department. Let's try it with just accounts. We are all from accounts. It's harder than you think, isn't it? Right, if that's north, why is the compass saying east? Alison, you might give me a hand. We're supposed to be part of a team. I don't know. So I says to him, you listen to me. Oi! Alison, do you want to work for Ray Perfect? Better than you nagging me all day. Well, I don't intend to become one of Ray's skibbies, which means we're going to try and win whether you like it or not. Well, how are you going to do that? Look at your stupid gun. The only way that'll kill anyone is if they die laughing. Well, we'd have a decent gun if you hadn't made us late. You were the one who was driving. Yeah, well, you were the one who gave the wrong directions. You were the one who took them. Look, for both our sakes, let's try to work together. Yes? Maybe if you give me my phone back. Only if you promise to stay off it for ten minutes. Give me back here! Now listen! All right! Just give me my baby back! Did he hurt you? Did he? Oh, come here, little chubby chubsies. <laughs> Good. Right, now, if the shadows are falling over here, that must be north. Uh, moss always grows on the west side of trees. Squirrels always bury their nuts on the south side. So if we go along this path, we can't fail. This is it, Alison! I really think we can win! Come on! <laughs> oh. One, two, three, hurrah! I think this game is really boring. We just keep going back to the beginning. But Claire, that's the whole point. That's why the game is called Reincarnation. See, I was a frog last time, and this time I go round as a lizard. When do you win? We all win because in the fullness of time, we're all absorbed into nirvana. Oh, but that's not proper winning. One person has to win and be better than everyone else. You'll change your minds when you've been playing it a bit longer. Now, it's your go. Four. One, two, three, four. And what does that square say? Bad karma. In a previous life, you were a circus owner and brutally exploited animals. Miss your turn for the next 12 rounds while you contemplate the figure of Buddha. Where is Buddha? Brian, don't eat Buddha! <laughs> I've got it. If we say we're instead of we are, it should fit. We're from the accounting department. No, that doesn't work either.
Look, come on, Alison. We can't let a little setback like this throw us off course. Little setback? We're stuck in a hole in the middle of nowhere and we can't get out and there's no one we can ask for help. Yes, we can. If we call the fire brigade, pass a phone. I can't get a signal. We're in a hole, stupid. Look, all right, all right. Look, it doesn't matter. We can make a sort of rope. You know, hook it over that tree stump and, and pull ourselves out. Uh, we'll use your bra and my belt. Why not my belt and your bra? Well, what do you think? Because you're not wearing a belt and I'm hardly likely to be wearing a bra, am I? Well, maybe you should. Fine. Right, I'll, I'll tell you what we'll do instead then. We'll, we'll go back to the office and start moving our furniture into the sales department. Well, good, because I'd rather be in sales. be a lot more fun and be with you all the time. You wouldn't survive ten minutes with Ray Perfect. He actually expects his secretaries to work. Are you saying I don't work? I spent eight hours a day on that telephone. Yes, tackling vital work issues like whether your new phone's got double-back somersault triple recorded dialing. I'd be better off employing a corpse. At least it would be quiet and it would probably get more done. How dare you? How dare you? Have you got any idea what it's like working for a nutter like you? With your stupid son and your stupid daughter with her inflatable swelling bits and your, and your stupid hippie ex-wife. I'm not surprised she left you. Even that great fat bald bloke's better than you. And who has to listen to this every minute of every hour of every day? Me! And I'm sick of it! Well, if it's that bad, why don't you resign? I will. I... I resign! Good! I'm going! Mummy, when will Daddy be here? I don't know when Daddy will be here, but it doesn't matter, does it? Because you're having a lovely time with Mummy, aren't you? Brian? Well, anyway, after lunch, we're going to do something really lovely. I don't suppose it's a video? No, it's not a video! We're going to teach you how to meditate, which is very important because it stops you being tense and teaches you how to relax. Now, finish your lunch while Caleb and I go and get the room ready. Brian, I have got an idea. If I eat some of Mummy's food, then Daddy will have to come back. Hmm? Because I will get all allergic. Hmm? Give me that stuff that smells of cat. Get sulky. Hey, team! How's the team? What's it look like? Fine, fine, everything's fine. Uh, as I say, fine. You know, obviously the hole is just a temporary glitch, but um, on the whole, you know, we're, we're doing fine. But the team is responding well as a team to this crisis. Listen, cloth ears, I'm one end of a great big hole, and he's the other end. I don't know what kind of a team you think that makes, but in my book, it spells Cobblers United. Now, why don't you make yourself useful, bog off, and call a fire brigade? I'm not programmed to deal with this. Alison, you can't talk to him like that. Oh, that team, team, team gets on my nerves. Yes, well, it gets on my nerves too, but that's not the point. No, the point is he's an American with too many teeth and a microphone wrapped round his head. And therefore we have to pay him $50,000 a day. So he can drivel on about how splatting someone with paint makes you a better team. When all it does is give a lot of menopausal male middle managers a bit of a thrill because they can play at being soldiers for an afternoon. Eric, let's get out of here. This is it. Real teamwork. Uh, 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 that's it, Alison. Go for it. <laughs> it's no good, Alison. I can't reach it. You'll have to phone the fire brigade. Alison! Yeah, well, we were stuck in a hole. That's sort of oblong shape. Well, it wasn't a circle. Look, don't you know? I know the difference between an oblong and a circle. Nearly there. Oh! oh, oh, oh. Time to post the books! Come on, you little monkey. We're gonna get you in this time. Oh, oh, oh. Wake up! Wake up! I need some sherry!
Hello? Oh, hi. Thank goodness. I need some help. Certainly. Keep going for about 200 yards past the windmill, take the first left, then third on the right, and follow the left-hand fork and you're there. Mr. Johnson, these injections aren't optional. <laughs> Empty your minds, relax, forget all the anger, all the frustration, particularly that caused by ungrateful members of your family who are resistant to you showing them new things which are self-evidently better than the things their father lets them do. Feel yourself light, like a feather, like air. I think Mummy's food was too healthy. Normally I would have been allergic by now. <laughs> Feel yourself floating. I'm floating, Mummy! At last, you see? You found something of Mummy's you do enjoy! Absolute quadruple decker super value ass burger of a victory. Feeble, your time is up. Huzzah! 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 Thus, gentlemen, our victory is assured. With accounts slain and data left to languish in the trench hewn by our own fair hands, glory awaits. For lo, the target lies yonder. Yet afore we hasten there to raise our pennon in triumph, let us tarry a while to celebrate our hard-won, or to speak sooth, easily won victory. There's cocky, there's unbearably arrogant, and there's Ray Perfect. Allow me to share with you a rather diverting anecdote, the subject of which is my most magnificent triumph in the company go-karting competition last year. I said, my dear man, it was simple. I did kick the wretched thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you haven't listened to a word I've said. Please, no. Shh, shh. Keep going for about 200 yards, past the windmill, take the first left, then third on the right, and follow the left-hand fork, and you're there. <sighs> Do it, big man. Oh, no. Turn him into a Jackson Pollock. Come on, Ray. Make my day. Make it quick. No. What? Only the truly great Eric know the quality of mercy. I know what is at stake for you. The high price to be exacted from your failure today. Go, desperate, needy one. Go and win. And may Data survive with you. Raymond, you've humbled us all, like Jesus did. Yes, yes! Um, Alison! What? What are you doing here? I've been here ages. What kept you? Well, look, it doesn't matter now. We are going to win. Do you 
you understand, Alison? We're actually going to win. We've just got to raise our flag. Quick! Well, where's the flag? I had it. Did you pick it up? No. Oh, no, where is it? Mr. Johnson, that's not yours! <laughs> no! Think. Think there must be something we can do. We've got to get it up before the other teams get here. Well, I want to buy a new phone. And he says, why do you want to buy a new phone? I said, I know. We'll just phone HQ and tell them we're here. Quick, give me the phone. Oh, so it's all right for you to borrow it now and it suits you, but when I'm on the phone, it's all... Oh, shut up, Alison, get off the line! Alison, there's a world of difference between using a mobile on company business and making endless personal calls. Yeah? Oh, hi, Liz. What's wrong with Claire? Look, I'm, I'm busy now, can't you deal with it? Well, how could she get allergic? That's ridiculous! Look, Liz, I'll, I'll be home soon. Liz, I'm on the verge of saving my entire career. It'll have to wait. Don't worry, I'm not... Oh. Dear. Yes, I sterilised the tent. Yes, I boiled the ground sheet. Yes, I sprayed insect repellent in the tent. Yes, I've used lots of it. Mrs Shackleton, for any bugs to survive, they'll have to have been wearing breathing equipment. Brian, I hope you're packed. They'll be here for you soon. Look. Look, Mrs Shackleton, I'm about to go out and I really must... I appreciate your daughter is very allergic, but I've checked the tent and the whole of my garden and I've taken every possible precaution. No, I haven't washed the lawn. Look, I've, I've got to go. Listen. Shh. Oh! Yes, and I look forward to finally meeting you as well. Working. Just keep doing exactly what I told you. We're at the top of your street. <gasps> it worked! He's breathing again! <laughs> oh, that was a bit close. Brian, you're a Cub Scout. You're supposed to be prepared. <laughs> Is wrong with Mrs. Shackleton? I've got half a mind to call the whole thing off. But that is not fair, Daddy. Brian is going camping. You said I could go camping too. All right, darling. All right. I just wish she'd calm down. That's all. You're only putting up a tent in the back garden. She is just worried because Julie is very, very, very allergic. <laughs> I hate prescription recorder. 
only plays one note. Well, that is because if it had holes, it would collect dust. It is stupid. Ow! It's all right. You're not hurt. Kiss it better. <laughs> she has to be very careful. She even swells up if her mummy kisses her. Well, we all have to be careful, darling. But there's a world of difference between showing concern and being hysterical. What are you doing? It is our midnight feast. You can't go camping without a midnight feast.、Um, darling, you have to have your prescription midnight feast. I hate prescription midnight feast. It is stinky. I bet Brian is having a proper midnight feast at his scout camp. That's different. He's not allergic. He doesn't need his stomach pumped if he eats the wrong cheese. Besides, it's not just about you. I've got to look after you and Julie. What happened to all the ice? Maria took it because she is cleaning the bathroom. Sasa tota si sa ta to tota vodka, ei brandy, ei andi aki fini menti gini porti perno. Right, I'm off. How do I look? Yeah, I've got a chicken next to your head. Thank you. I'll see you later. I'm watching you.、Oh. Very good, David. A lovely half hitch. You've really earned your knot tying badge, and so have you, Oliver. Outstanding. Yeah. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Do I look okay? Perfect, particularly if you want to know how long it takes to cook a chicken. So, where's this marvelous place where, as you so delicately put it, even I can't fail to score? Yeah. Forget the nightclubs and the discos and the privately run bordellos in Streatham. This is the place to chat up women. There's nothing they like more than a man who cares about food preparation. Ask how to make meringues, and before you know it, you're back at her place, going hammer and tongs with an egg whisk. Observe. Ah, aubergines, so delicious, but so difficult to cook. <laughs> What do you do with them? I bake them, turn them into dips. <laughs> I've tried dips, but the results have always been very disappointing. Maybe I'm using the wrong recipes. Well, I've got a marvelous book. It's actually in my car. Would you like to have a look at it? <laughs> Good luck, Mita. Aubergines. So difficult to know what to do with them, isn't it? You wouldn't have any ideas what to do with them, would you? More like you look at a cookery book. Mm-hmm. Good idea.、Uh, I, I don't suppose、um, you've got a, a cookery book I could look at.、Mm-hmm. If you don't mind my saying so, I think this is a bit inappropriate. I mean, I've never met you before. You suddenly come up to me and ask me how to cook aubergines. This is a supermarket, not a singles bar. <laughs> ah. The perfect combination: playing Rachmaninoff and reading Tolstoy. Dearest husband, a shock has overcome me. Happenstance, I did notice in our neighbour's garden a tent. It could have doubled as the world's largest dirty handkerchief. Yet still, it did remind me. We have forgotten. Tis the season when children do like to camp out. Zooms. Could it be that we are on the brink of denying our most excellent daughter a pleasure enjoyed by the much more inferior children next door? Hand me the golden pages. Duck. D- difficult to know what to do with it, isn't it? You disgust me. Wine. This is exactly why I became a lesbian. Excuse me. I couldn't help noticing what a discerning shopper you are. Oh, so thank you. I wondered if you'd like to join me for a drink. Oh, 
would that that would be fantastic? Because tomorrow night, Woodman Supermarket is presenting New World Palate Pleasers, a wine tasting evening. <laughs> Midnight feast est arrivé! Huzzah! Faisons à la Normande! Splendid! A wild strawberry, Madagascan vanilla mousse, ooh la la! And here is the pièce de résistance! A 14 tier gâteau depicting Dormier's witty caricatures of the French bourgeoisie in chocolate! <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you'll be pleased to know I now have actually washed the lawn. No, Mrs Shackleton, I haven't dried it and put antiseptic cream on it afterwards. Is Mr Shackleton as bad as her? Mm, I don't know. Julie's mum does live on her own. I think she is disforced. Why does that not surprise me? OK, lovely. And I look forward to finally meeting you. Claire? I am just going to put my midnight feast in the pen. And um, that is your prescription midnight feast, isn't it? Yes, Daddy. Good girl. Thank you, Daddy. And take your coat off, darling. You don't need it in this weather. Yes. Oh, hi, Doc. So, did you get lucky? Well, I thought the checkout lady was making eyes at me, but uh, I think she was just surprised because I'd been in the supermarket eight and a half hours. Not to worry. They're opening a new one near you. Maybe you should... Doc, it's no good. It's not going to work. Let's face it, I'm never going to meet the woman of my dreams. Sorry, wrong address. I'm looking for the dental practice. Number 50. Excuse me, Eric. I'm Sarah Shackleton, Julie's mum. <laughs> I feel so guilty about phoning you so much. You must think I'm completely hysterical. No, not at all. It was, it was lovely, lovely to talk to you. I, I, mean, I, I actually looked forward to your calling. It's just that Julie's so allergic. And last time she went camping, there was a terrible incident. Can we go in the tent now? You will be careful, won't you? Promise me. Promise me you'll be careful. Promise me. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Just promise me you'll be careful. Be as careful as you possibly can. Promise me you will be careful. Swear to me. Swear to me you'll be careful. Promise me. Of course I will. Mummy? Oh, no. I keep forgetting. She's so allergic I can't even kiss her. I'm sorry. I'm being stupid. No, you're not. You're, you're really not. I, I, I think you, you, you're just being responsible. And I, I think that's a very noble and, and, and praiseworthy and, and very attractive quality in, in a person. That's very sweet of you to say. Would you like to stay for a cup of tea? <laughs> ah, no, Maria. Who's this? This is our au pair, Maria, who's about to go out. No, I come cleany clean. No, you're not. You're going out. But I have nowhere to go. There, it's a wine tasting. It's free booze. More bottles than you could possibly desire. Bye. She's very good, actually. Very reliable. Very responsible. If I know back in three days, you'll not call police this time. I just skanky dranky and ditch. Very good, David. That life saving badge is yours. Ditto, Oliver. Excellent. Oh, God, and burn. Are you sure about this? I mean, a cup of tea is one thing, but I really didn't want to put you to all this trouble. No, really, it's no trouble. I, I, but I should warn you, I'm, I'm not really a very good cook. Don't worry, I'm sure it'll be lovely. Well, I had a slight problem because the cooking instructions came off and, and I wasn't sure how long I needed to leave it in the oven. It's awful. It might be better in the middle. Sorry, no. I was just thinking about what happened to Julie last time. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm being stupid. Oh, no, 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 absolutely <laughs> not. I, I, I think you're being sensible and, and responsible and honest and, and very, very attractive and gorgeous and in the way you deal with the whole situation. But 
You needn't worry. They're, they're absolutely fine. You know, the longer I stay here, the better I feel. Do you think it is time for a midnight feast yet? It is called the past seven. Yeah, midnight, midnight feast! feast. Oh. oh. Perhaps I should go and check on the kids? Oh, don't worry, they'll be fine. Did you hear what I just said? Me, Mrs. Neurotic. I actually feel relaxed. It must be your influence. I finally got over what happened last time. I finally got over the need for it to dominate my thoughts every waking moment. I'm glad it's... It was when I was married. I really, really wanted to go camping, so my daddy put up a tent in the back garden, just like your daddy has done. I told him to be extra careful. He didn't secure the tent properly, so the wind blew the tent away, exposed Julie to the night air. She suffered a massive allergic reaction, swelled up inside her sleeping bag. I was all swelled up like a big fat whale, and they had to call an ambulance of the fire brigade. The sleeping bag was a heavyweight polyester. They had to cut her out of it with a special saw. The place was awash with doctors and social workers. I even got a call from the producer of 999. It must have been very frightening. Yes. The farmer pulled out this big saw and I thought they were going to cut my head off. Did you scream? Really, really loud. A month later we split up. I'm a reasonable woman, but how can you forgive a man who can't secure guy ropes properly? It must have been horrible. I'm still haunted by that moment. My husband's standing in the living room telling me everything's fine, and then that sound from outside. The tent's all right. The tent's secure. There's nothing wrong with the tent. Darling, are you all right? Her head's swollen. It's bigger. It's a different shape. I can feel it. Well, it's nothing to do with the tent. Absolutely nothing to do with the tent. Mother. Don't try to speak, darling. Just breathe deeply with me. <laughs> She's all right. I think it's important to remember the tent is still completely intact. Mommy, I'm fine. Oh, thank goodness. So it doesn't hurt, darling. Only way you will critic me. <laughs> What kind of a shelter is it supposed to be? Am I to understand that once again your mouth played a pivotal role in all this? Brian, you're never going to win a badge if you don't start using some other parts of your body. He's not breathing. <laughs> I can't even see it. Okay, everybody, if you'd like to taste it. <coughs> right, if we move on to the second wine. Waste not, want not. <coughs> This is so sweet of you. You're sure this is okay? Absolutely. I mean, you've had a nasty shock, and I think you'll feel more comfortable if you're still here to keep an eye on her. You're helping me through an enormous psychological barrier. It's nice to know that not all men are like my husband. Well, I'm certainly not. I mean, you did see the tent, didn't you? Good night, darling. <laughs> bye bye. No harm in being absolutely sure. I don't want to build it up too much at this stage. You know, we only met yesterday and we're virtually strangers and we don't know anything about each other. But I want to marry her, have her children, and die in her arms. Ah. <sighs> I'm hungry. Oh, am I? Heather! 
Please, do you have any scraps that I could eat? Alas, poor starving child, thou art too late. We gave the remnants of our banquet de minuit to our two Dalmatians, outstanding and superb. Oh? Again. Look after my daughter. She'd have been better off with King Herod. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dream. Just a horrible dream. <sighs> <laughs> We're gonna get you in this time, you little monkey. <laughs> Santa Maria, I'm in no key. Sorry, you're still in bed. Is Julie all right? Fine, absolutely fine. I checked them in the night and this morning. It was fine. Tent, absolutely 100% secure. Completely safe. You're amazing. Why couldn't my husband have been like you? Well, you mustn't be too hard on him. I think a lot of guys find it difficult to be responsible. I mean, I've, I've never had a problem with that, but you know, I guess it's just I'm lucky. No, Eric, I'm the lucky one. Anyway, I ought to get going. I've got loads to do, and Julie's got junior salsa. I'd better go and get her up. You stay there. I'll go and sort the kids out. It just gets better and better. And Eric, hmm? I hope you're free tonight. My turn to cook dinner. Da, 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 da. <gasps> <gasps> what? What? Oh, oh no! Are you all right? Your head, your head is bigger. It's vast. Maybe it's your body. I said it's smaller. Your body's got smaller. Daddy, she's fine. We're both fine. <gasps> oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, darling, you're safe. You're safe. Everyone's. Oh, I can't be so. I'm so happy. Oh, thank you. I. Thank you, God. Thank goodness. Oh. Julie ready? She's fine. She's fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, she's going to be fine. But where is she? She's in the garden. Oh, no, my head. Well, can you hurry her up? I'll just check if her salsa stuff's in the car. Oh, dear. Oh, no, Maria. Oh. Maria, I need your help. I need you and Claire to get some of this swelling down. I go to sleep. No, don't go to sleep. Get to work. Um, Claire, you... Go and get some flannels and, and stick them under the car tap. Maria! Oh, my head boom the boom the boom Maria, if you don't do this, I'm going to tell the police what's really growing in your window box. Julie! Coming! Where's Julie? The thing is, uh, I've just spoken to Julie and Claire, and that the kids are having such a lovely time, it seems a bit of a shame to disturb them. But what about her salsa? She couldn't give it a miss, just this once. She's doing an exam. You know, I've never been a... 
big fan of exams myself. She's <laughs> <laughs> getting worse, though, Maria. Her breathing has gone all funny. Fresh air. We get fresh air. Yes, and in the southeast of England, uh, 68% of parents said they preferred continuous assessment anyway. Look, Eric, I really must get going. I've got to pick up Julie's prescriptions first, and there's so many it's going to mean at least a two-hour wait in the chemist. I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, you go and pick up your prescriptions, and uh, I'll take Julie to Salsa. I don't know. Oh, but they're so happy playing together, you, you should see them. They're an absolute picture of contentment. <laughs> <laughs> Persuaded. So, you go to the chemist and I'll take Julie to Salsa. Eric, you're so kind. You've done nothing but look after me and Julie since the moment we arrived. I know she's in safe hands. <laughs> Careful, Maria. So, I'll see you tonight. Maria, be careful. Goodbye. No, you mustn't. I can't let you go. What? I mean... Uh, I want you to stay here, like like this, and now, forever, because because uh, because uh, because, because, because uh, kiss me, Paul, Paul. <laughs> you better go and get your prescriptions then. We must get her out of the sleeping bag. <laughs> it is a medicine. Which one is the white pill? Any mini money money bini bini bunny bini Whatever Bye then Bye Maria bring Julie down here we've got to get her to casualty After all that I've got to give you her dance things Thanks bye Eric, is something wrong? No no But you're Julie I can explain <laughs> It's fine. I think she looks hilarious. Where did you get that? I don't know, Mommy. It's Daddy's. We have been playing dressing up. Have we? Yes, of course. Of course you have. Oh, oh, that's marvellous. That's brilliant. Well, they're obviously having a lovely game, so you'd better go and get your prescriptions. Yes, and I'll see you later. Eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. It's Brian! Hello! This is my son, Brian. He's uh, been at Cub Scout Camp. And you've got a badge. Oh, Brian, that's fantastic. First aid. Well done. So, what did you have to do for that? Supermarkets. They can provide you with ready-to-eat lobster thermidor with quail's egg dressing in a caviar souffle, but they can't make a plastic bag that can carry more than one tin. Of course I want to go boozy drink Red Lion, but I need wages first, so I can no go boozy drink till father come home. 
Father, come home. Wait. Slowly. Slowly. Walk around me. Walk around me. And gently shut the door behind you. Don't slam it. Gently shut the door. No slam it. <sighs> I forgot wages. Would you like to buy this bowl, Mrs. Madam? I think it is um about twenty p. Brian, would you like to buy this? It is the thing that Daddy uses for making the potatoes soft, and which we use for making that spider into pieces. It is only twenty p. Brian, Brian. Why doesn't she just mug me? It amounts to the same thing. Come on, Brian, out the way. Uh. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. The school fete is going to be opened by the Duchess of Kent, and I am going to do the white elephant stall. Oh, darling, that's super. And I am going to get something off you, and something off Maria, and something off old Mrs. Wilson. That's lovely. And we had an election in class, and everyone had to vote to say who they thought should run the white elephant stall, and I won. Oh, lovely, darling. And I beat Julie Dunkley and Andrew Fnor and Mary Wiley and Andrew Dwonkin and Hassan Ben Ahmed and Heather Perfect and what? 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 What did you say? We had an election. No, 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 no. Who did you beat? Julie Dunkley. No, forget her. Andrew Fnor. No, Fnor. forget her. Mary. No, forget Mary. For forget all the others. Who was the last one? Heather Perfect. <gasps> you got more votes than Heather Perfect. Yes, Daddy. So she got less votes than you. Yes, Daddy. So in in terms of the total number of votes cast, you came above her. Yes, Daddy. So. So what you're really trying to say is a representative of this family beat a representative of the perfects at something. Yes, Daddy. Oh, Claire, that's marvellous. Well done. That's marvellous. You really are marvellous. That that is tremendous. It, isn't that marvellous, Brian? Oh, Claire, you are an absolute marvel. The white elephant stall. Oh, I'd love to see little twee knickers next door coming home tonight. Oh, mother dearest, I regret to inform you that I shan't be managing the albino pachyderm stall this year. Yes, that's because no one wants to be served by a stuck-up brat. Oh, Claire, you really are a marvel. Isn't she marvellous, Brian? <laughs> So, so I must have overdone the Claire your marvelous bit because Brian burst into tears and ran off. I tried to talk to him about it, but he just didn't want to know. Why don't we talk about it over a drink? Let's try this place. All kids are moody sometimes. My son was moody for most of the 1980s. Why was that? He was depressed about how much time he'd spent being depressed in the 1970s. That's worse than that. Brian's not even putting things in his mouth anymore, and that's the one thing he's good at. I mean, he won't even lick anything. And do you think it's just because of this one incident? I think so. I mean, he's having a tough time at school, but he's used to that. And he's having a tough time socially, but he's used to that. The one thing he isn't used to is having his father spend an entire evening telling him how marvelous his sister is. Tell me, my dear, what's your name? Kevin. <laughs> Often an older child does feel rejected when there's a younger sibling. It can lead to deep psychological scarring. But there is a pragmatic and theoretically sound solution to this age-old familial conundrum. What's that? Buy him a very big present. No, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fall into that trap and be one of those parents who buys their children off, giving them presents rather than dealing with their feelings. We're getting divorced, but never mind. Here's Action Man's amphibious buggy. Can I have this for my stall? What about this? What about this? Can I have this? What about that? What about this? Brian, Brian, where are you? What about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Shut up! <gasps> Claire, where's Brian? I don't know, Daddy. Well, did he come home from school with you? Yes, Daddy. So where is he now? I don't know, Daddy. He's run away. I know it. It's all my fault. He could be anywhere. Maybe he went round to the Shipleys. Hello, this is the Shipley household. We're not here at the moment. Why is it you can never get hold of anyone when you want them? Well, at least the police won't be on answer phone. Hello. Hello, emergency. Oh, thank goodness! I need the police. Putting you through. You will be held in a queue. 
This is ridiculous. He could be anywhere. He could be in a crate en route to Thailand. He could be in the back garden. He could be in the back garden. Brian, there you are. I was looking for you everywhere. Well, Miss Woodhouse, he almost immediately began. Are you inclined to dance? Indeed, said Emma. I do believe it possible to dance here with no material injury accruing to either body or mind. <laughs> ah, Eric, how art thou? Um, yep, fine. You look a little confused. Well, it, it's just that uh, I was looking for Brian and, and he was, um, well, he seemed to be just staring at something in, you know, in, in your garden. Of course he was. Where else would he be? I'm sorry? He's been staring into our garden for the best part of a month at Heather, our young, beautiful, elegant and much sought after Queen of Hearts. Did you not know about his great infatuation? Um. Surely you know about the letters? Um. And the phone calls, silent though they were. Um. And the presents, the gifts, the flowers, the invitations, the valentines, the cards, and the potato print portrait of Heather that made her look like the victim of a yoga accident. I'm surprised you didn't know, but then maybe the evidence was a little scanty. Of course, it's so difficult getting the balance right, isn't it? You lavish attention on one child, you end up overlooking the other. And I imagine Brian is desperately easy to overlook. Brian, dinner time! If that's all right with you. So, what will you find for my stall at the fete, Daddy? I'll have a look later, darling. Got a lot of things on my mind at the moment. Where? Where's my little Brian? Come on, Brian. Time for food. But not if you don't want to, obviously, but it's here if you do. Maria didn't find me anything, and there is only one day left. Oh, um, oh, why don't you go and ask old Mrs Wilson? I'm busy with Brian. Lovely Brian! Matey, 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 blokey! I think this is what they call flavouritism. <laughs> possible to dance here with no material injury accruing to either body or mind, despite the felicities of rapid motion. Mm-hmm. Brian? Brian? Brian! So, what do you want for dinner? What can your old dad get his terrific son? Hmm? Burgers? Chips? Chips? Beans? Crisps? Chocolate? Chips? More chips? Bit of everything, hey? What's it to be? Something terrific for my terrific son. Brian. Me old mate. Me old mucker. Terrific, marvellous, terrific old mucker, son. Do you know, it's funny. I don't know whether you know this, Brian, but, but sometimes, as you get older, you can say things about people, you know, things that sound a little bit, well, not that nice. Do you know, let me think. Things like, oh, just off the top of my head, Little Miss Tweed Knickers Stuck Up Brat, for instance. It's, it's funny, but you can actually mean that in a nice way, you know, as a way of showing that you actually really, really like someone, Brian. <laughs> Brian? <laughs> How would you like a nice big present? Old Mrs. Wilson, it's me! Hello, you little monkey! I was wondering, cos I am running the white elephant at the school fete, if you could give anything for it. What sort of thing, dear? Anything that is old and interesting and nice. I'll tell you what, I've still got me ration book from the last war. Would that do? That would be lovely. It's upstairs in the attic. I'll just nip up and get it. Shall I come round and get it later? Don't you worry, I'll drop it round myself. I've got to dash out to the post anyway. It's lovely, Brian. It's a really terrific present from a really terrific bloke. She's going to love it. Ah, good model, neighbour. Hello, Ray. Um, Brian was just wondering whether Heather was in. My most excellent daughter is currently besporting herself in the back garden with her most cultivated young friend, Crispin Marveilleuse. They are engaged in an humorous and yet educational pastime, namely a game of doctors and nurses. Perhaps Brian would like to be an ancillary worker. 
Goodness me, I've made so much money from my private practice. Let's take a year off and go skiing. Okay. Brian Feeble, what are you doing in clusters? Go on, Brian. It'll be great. Oh, not another present. This is rather different from the others. Oh? A ring indeed is most different from the others. Crispin, I have received a gift which doth appear to be of considerable substance. What thinkest thou of this bounty? Zoons, it's not even a proper diamond. It's zirconium, and it's only gold plate. His family own most of Hatton Garden. Moreover, it seems to me as if it has been set by an amateur. See how the mounting is constructed. So uneven and crooked, and the design is quite laughable. No, thank you, Brian. I am unable to accept this. I am not in the habit of wearing Jim Cracks and Jewel Jaws. Besides, as you can see, my finger is already taken. <laughs> Do you think Mummy will have something for the white elephant? I think your Mummy is a white elephant. No, on the bookshelf, on top! But the plant is too heavy. Caleb, the karma's free-floating! The pot has to go there! Go to the park. I do believe it's possible to dance here with no material injury accruing to either body or mind, despite the felicities of rapid motion. Provided one's partner's not of a disagreeable form and countenance, on the subject of which, what has happened to your wretched former partner? Returned to a more suitable milieu. <laughs> if it's any consolation, Brian, I think your ring's lovely. It's really great. I really like it. Even if Heather doesn't. No, no but I, I can tell you exactly why. You see, there's a very logical explanation. It's because she's a horrible snob. <laughs> Not entirely. I, mean, I, I know you like her. I'm just trying to say that you're better than that. You're worth a million of her and you deserve better. <laughs> Frankly, Crispin Marveyers is welcome to her. <laughs> no, but only in a manner of speaking. <laughs> Nearly there. Oh, Claire will be pleased. I meant pub. Not as insight for the consumption of alcohol, but pub as in neutral forum for discussing the dragon problem. Shut your bald cake hole! Daddy, daddy, daddy! I have still only got one thing for my stall, and the fate is tomorrow, and I need some other things, and I... Claire, I'm really busy at the moment. But I have only got the Fuang Xing thing for me. Claire, I can't talk to you now. Brian's very upset. But so am I very upset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, please, not stereotypes. 
Mario crying. The form shot, Eric. I must have it back. Liz, you gave it to Claire for her stall. I'm a wash with yin, and we need something yang. I'm completely unbalanced. Huh, I've been saying that for years. Yes, well, that's exactly the kind of cynical response I expect from Westerners like you. Liz, you're from Aylesbury. <laughs> Please, Liz. It's like a child weepathon in there. The only person who hasn't been in floods of tears is me. <laughs> Please don't take the phone show. Here we are. I'll just ring the bell. Oh, 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 oh. oh. We'll go to the fete and we'll have a great time. We won't let Heather spoil our fun, will we? We'll show her we don't care about what's happened. Look, of course we care. I know we care, Brian, but we don't want them to know that, do we? There, that's it. It'll be fine. There'll be apple bobbing. You're good at that, aren't you? You've got a real gift for putting things in your mouth. OK, Claire, got all your stuff. I have not got any stuff, Daddy. Mummy took her thing back. What about all the other things? There aren't any. You forgot to find me anything. But Brian has been very upset. I understand. There we are. You see, I didn't forget. A tin of tuna and the newspaper. There's more. Maria! But I have nothing suitable. What are you talking about? Everything in this room's rubbish. Just find some things. Otherwise, I'm going to tell the landlord of the Red Lion where the contents of his pub went last night. <laughs> there we are. Sorted. Thank you, Daddy. Alan Watson, the Duchess of Kent. How do you do, ma'am? And this is Roger and Louise Kempton. Roger and Louise, the Duchess of Kent. How do you do, ma'am? And this is Ray and Sue Perfect. How do you do, ma'am? How much is the doll? Um, pretty pee. It is, um, 20p. There you are. The really lovely shoes, how much are they, Claire? Um, 20p. I can't get it out. It's stuck. The apple's stuck. Roger, quick, she might see. Who, the Duchess of Kent? Oh, I don't care about her. No, Sue Perfect. Brian, you mustn't worry. If we bump into the Perfects, we'll deal with it together. Come on. That's it. And if we see them, we'll just show them we're coping quite nicely. Thank you very much. Oh, no, Mrs. Perfect. Ah, Eric. And Brian, too. How splendid to see you here enjoying this jamboree. I feared Brian would be cloistered in a hamlet-like exile after such a hammer blow of rejection. Oh, no, 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 we put all that behind us now. Um, it, it, um, it, 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 it's a bit like that, um, what, what, what is that quote that everyone always, um, quotes? Well, Browning said, Ah, that a man's dream should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? Auden said, If equal affection cannot be, let the more loving one be me. And Rambo said, Quand la mort est finie, le monde n'est pas moi, bel jardin. Um... Yes, well, I, I was thinking of there's plenty more fish in the sea. How apposite it makes you wonder why poets bother. Hmm. A anyway, um, the point is, Brian's over it, on your son. <laughs> Tears of joy, I assume. Dearest wife, let us not forget that the Duchess of Kent hath asked that we autograph some items for her friends. A fairly well, Eric, and Brian, I'm sure it will not be long before you have another disappointment to take your mind off this one. <laughs> Goodbye, Brian. Did I show you my ring? <laughs> 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 Brian! 
Brian, I'm sorry. I, I never should have made you come. Would you prefer it if we went home? Hmm. OK, wait here. I'll just go and tell Claire. And what about dinner on the 26th? Uh, well, it's not a terribly convenient. It's only a state banquet. It can be moved. <laughs> Hey, Crispin, my one true heart, it appeareth that my erstwhile suitor does not wish to be parted from the object of his devotion. <laughs> oh, now that he's here, he might as well play with us. What shall us be playing? How about a game of impressions? A first-class idea. I'll begin. Have you seen this Mary, video? His shoes are this terrible. video. Arguing with me? You must talk to my daddy. Claire, we're going home. Not before we get an explanation. Did Claire get these things off you? Of course she did. What are you suggesting? That I'm the kind of parent who's so concerned about one of his children he forgets about the needs of the other? Well, let me tell you, I'm not like that. I support both my kids equally. Both of them. So, yes, of course I got these things for Claire. I'm going to break your legs, Pop. I'm going to break your legs, Pop. Ah, uh, well, well there, there were other people involved. And what about this video? Oh, my goodness. Daddy, what is all girl action? And these shows are a disgrace. <laughs> I'm Brian Feeble. I'm Brian Feeble. <laughs> Claire, I'm so sorry, darling. I had no idea. I mean, it is my fault, but in a way, you know, I, I wasn't to know, and, and, and so it's not really my fault, or, or, although it is. But what you need to remember is, I, I, I mean, the thing is, it, it's... A... I'm going to buy you such a big present. Thank you, Daddy. Brian, we're going now. <laughs> waggish buffoonery, waggish buffoonery. Oh. I've had just about enough of this. You two are an absolute disgrace. How dare you treat my son like this? Come on, Brian. Oh, a challenge! So, the warm toilet. Okay, gentlemen, I want a good clean competition. You stick your heads in and lift out as many apples as you can. You've got 30 seconds and may the best man win. Go! Come on, Crispin! Go for it, Brian! <laughs> That's it, Crispin! Trounce him! Come on, Brian! You can do it! <laughs> Bravo, Crispin! It's a walkover! Come on, Brian! You're running out of time! <laughs> Easy peasy, Crispin! Just one, Brian! Just get one! It's about pride now! Ten! Nine! Crispin's the winner! Don't forget pride! Just make sure you don't drown! Six! Five! Four, three, one, time's up! Yes! Oh, Crispin, you have failed your Queen of Hearts. Go from here and never disgrace my presence again. Perchance I mistouched you. It is true that you have won the day, and perhaps you do deserve to kiss my hand. <laughs> so, Brian, are you feeling happier again? Hmm. Well, so am I. And I must say, I really think you've done the right thing. You're much better off having nothing to do with Heather. Getting romantically involved with people like her is a recipe for disaster. It'll be a lot less stressful for you, <laughs> and a lot less stressful for me. Come on, Claire. Claire? Claire? Oh, no!
I'm actually going to throttle her. Maria! I expressly asked her to get some more loo roll. Maria! I'm not going to wipe my bottom on the cardboard centre again. I'm simply not going to do it. Maria! Here! Now, please! Where are the Andrex puppies when you need them? Honestly, Brian, why can't you keep your clothes in your room? <gasps> it's a shock, that's all. Brian with an adult magazine. He's only a boy. Well, that's when I got my first one. I remember it now. Panty Parade. A bevy of beauties lying on a pile of... Doc, Doc, please. Look. Do I confiscate it and tell him off? Or do I put it back under the bed and pretend I've never seen it? No, mate, no. Pick it up, dust it down, and have a damn good look at it with him. What? Well, the worst thing you can do is ignore it. Otherwise, he'll grow up as one of those people who thinks that sex is about shame and embarrassment and, and inadequacy. Isn't it? Ah, Brian, great. Um, while you're here, um, you know, just the two of us, um, without your sister, I, I just thought, um, we could have a, have a quick chat. You know, um, man to man, just you and me, as, as Claire's not here. She's, she's not here, is she? No, good, good. So, um, uh, well, uh, as you know, you're you're a growing lad, and and uh, you know, at the point where where you're aware of of things, and um, quite, you know, o obviously, as you're getting older, I mean, you know, as as you get older, then obviously, as I say, you 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 start to be interested in you know, certain things, um, things, uh, as you know, that well, you know, obviously, you you know, um, that, that when 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 a, when a man, when when a man, well, well. Uh, a man and a woman, and, and if they're in love, and, and 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 be attracted to each other, and and so 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 what they do is obviously you know, the, 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 the thing is um, um fertilise, and the uh, millions of them swimming up and as, 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 like a plant, and the whole thing the sw swimming, and um obviously then then a, 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 a baby, uh, perhaps you uh, any questions? What is it does the swimming, Daddy? <gasps> Hey, has anyone seen my magazine? Not only do you leave an adult mag lying around the house, but you're in it. So what? Not only are you in it, but so is my kitchen. It was too cold to do the photos outside. We shouldn't have been doing them at all. I implore you to clean, cook and look after the kids. I don't remember asking you to lie naked across the table with a sign round your neck saying dinner is served. A control should be the better both of Well, it's no good saying sorry now. It's too late for that. There you go, somewhere. No, you are. You're fired. <laughs> jokey, jokey. It's no joke. <laughs> you funny, man. What is the freedom morning? Hello, Eric. How art thou? Yeah, yes, fine, fine. Yeah, I'm uh, absolutely fine. Yes, I heard the familiar sound of Eric Evil being abused, and I wondered if I could assist in any way. Uh, no, 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 it's fine. Everything's under control. Yes, so I said. A little contra talk with your au pair. Actually, um, uh, Maria's leaving us. Drive! What is that reason? Please don't be too proud to ask for help. Ah, actually, I'm getting the agency to send me a replacement right away. You seem strangely in control of events. How nice to see a different side to your character. Yeah, that's that's what happens in in times of crisis. You know, you, you find things out you weren't expecting. Uh, the strong become weak, and the weak become strong. And and people like me, who certain other people think are timid cowards who won't stand up for themselves, actually find the strength to say, No! I will not be pushed around! I I am the boss! Well, I, I need a replacement straight away. Well, they've got to pick up the kids from school tomorrow at half past three. No, there's no chance at all of me taking Maria back. I'm sorry, she had to go. Well, I've, I've just been saying to someone, there are times when you just have to put your foot down and not be afraid of confronting big issues head on. Daddy, 
What does the swimming in the man and the lady thing? I'll, t- I'll tell you later. I'm busy. Well, what about other au pairs? Right. Well, ooh, that's actually quite a bit more than I was paying for Maria. What about further east? Further east than that? No, 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 no still too much. Um, well, what about one of those really obscure Russian republics with a K, a Y and a Z in? Uh, well, I don't know. Is it, is it like biscuits? Can you send a selection? Racing along as I go. I can be helpful in the house, and especially with building and mending things. Also, I lay pipeline through Ural Mountains. Right, well, we'll be in touch. Right, well, we'll be in touch. <gasps> when I was in the Red Army, I was decorated many, 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 many times. <laughs> As I said, we'll, we'll be in touch. <laughs> we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. But in my national service, I was first female tank driver to score 21 kills. Oh, my goodness. Morning, Mr. Eric. Just off to the post. Jolly good. Fine, we'll manage. I'll pick you up from school. It's not a problem. And then you can tell us all about the swimming thing. Yes. Well, you could tell us now. Oh, here we are at school and we've run out of time. What a shame. But we are not at the school yet. You still have time to answer my question about the swimming thing. (laughs) Never mind, Claire. Uh, We'll have time later. The thing is, we are the dirt cheap end of the market and I'm afraid you are going to get some dirt cheap behaviour. Well, if it won't come off the first time, I'll try a combination of salt and vodka. But for God's sake, don't scrub it or the rest of its fur will come off. Oh, please, Terry, you have to find me a job. Otherwise, I have nothing. I have no home, I have no money. I'm sorry, darling, but you're not the easiest person to place. But I could au pair. Well, to be fair, love, you're not, are you? I mean, house fire, drunk and disorderly, a headline from the Mid-Sussex Gazette which says, au pair jams five-year-old's head in icebox. Well, I am cheap. Look, darling, this business ain't what it was. In the last three years, I've been flooded with the Macedonies, the Bulgies, the Ruskies, and do you know what? They're all reliable. They don't stay out all night with rock bands and they don't borrow explosives from a local building site to blow the door off the family drinks cabinet. I'm sorry, darling. I can't help you. Oh! I can pick them up from school. Loads of people juggle work and childcare. No reason why I can't, too. So, according to the auditor's report, these are the things that have got to be sorted out without fail. Sales, absolutely nothing at all. The only thing they had to say about you was, and I quote, transcendentally perfect. So well done, Ray. He left a pause expecting some applause. I mean, it's even enshrined in law. Personnel, four anomalies for you. Phew, that's a relief. Don't get cocky, Mike. You're not in Ray's class yet. So I'll just tell Pee I've got to leave early. And data. 362 questions, queries, vagaries, anomalies, problems, ass burgering cock-ups. There are so many holes in your records, it's like a doily has mated with a Swiss cheese. But what I don't understand is, when there is the man and the lady thing, what is it that does the swimming? I think it is the man. But what about the lady? I think she does swimming as well. Nah, it's the baby does the swimming. Babies can't swim. So it is the man and the lady. 
why did that do the swimming? Yes. So where does the baby come from? I think they must just find it at the swimming pool. Absolutely not! I could do it later. Uh, tonight. Or tomorrow. Now! If we don't give the auditors the answers they want by five o'clock, they'll release the report. And you know what that means. Swarms of DTI investigators all over the building. A scandal splashed all over the business pages. And you and I, Feeble, playing hunt the soap in the showers at Pentonville with a former guardsman called Buddy. So I said, well, if you're getting a new car, what colour is it going to be? And Dean said, blue. And I said, you're not having blue. And he said, I am having blue. And I said, Dean Tottle, how many more times? You are not having blue, you're having red, not blue. Come on, Eric. You're a man of action. You know you can do it. Hardly rocket science, is it? I mean, all you have to do is pull some documents out of the files. Can't be too difficult. You put everything in one file! Yeah, it's called filing. You're meant to have different files for different things. Says who? Well, says everyone. It's, it's just how you do filing. It's not how I do filing. What, what kind of order is it in? What do you mean? Is it in date order? Date order? Have you got any idea how long that would take to put this in date order? I've got time for that. I'm too busy. Alison, I've got to find 362 documents by the end of the day in this haystack. Well, you better stop talking and get on with it. There's another way. Another way. He's right. There is another way. Why not try strip right? Kiss goodbye to kanji deposits around your sink. Oh, it don't look too bad to me. I was hoping to enter him for crafts. In which category do you suggest I enter him? Dog most likely to be cast in a horror film? He's outrage! I do not get a job! I demand explanation! Excuse me, I haven't finished yet. You have now, lady. So he says, well, how do you know I won't crash a red car? And I said, well, you never crashed a red car last time you had a red car. The only car you crashed was a blue car. Yes. One down, 361 to go. So, that's 90 minutes. That's uh, times 60. So I've got to find one every 13 seconds. Oh, no. Liz will have to pick them up. I mean, she is their mother. And as their mother. So the essence of womanness and the essence of manness meet. And become one. A oneness born of two-ness that becomes oneness. Well, she can pick them up anyway. This is Liz and Caleb's answer phone. Neither Liz nor Caleb can answer the phone at present, as they are spending a day getting in touch with primordial truth by giving up language. So please leave a message after the grunt. <gasps> Liz, please come to the phone. It's urgent. I need you to pick up the kids. Liz. Liz. So he says, well, your mum had a red car and she crashed that, and I said she never Alison. crashed it. Someone went into the back of her. Alison! What? I've got to pop round to Liz's while I'm gone. Please, will you take over looking for the documents? The list's on my desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, I don't care. I don't like red cars. Alison! What? Now! I'm doing it. You're not. You're on the phone. I mean it. I was just phoning the archive to see if they had any back copies of the accounts and date order to help you out. All right? I'm, I'm sorry. So I said, listen, Dean Toto, we're having it in red. And what about the plant? My daddy said that the baby has to be fertilised by a plant. So the baby has to eat fertiliser? What is fertiliser? It's like poo. Ah! Mother Vaya, you little jerk. 
job. I can lay piping. I can serve a 78mm anti-tank weapon. Thing is, darling, if you don't mind me saying, I think that's the problem. That's not quite what Mr. Feeble's looking for in an Opal. I think he wants someone a bit more, uh, you know, traditional. Oh, yummy, no wishy washy, airy fairy, rinky dinky, Mary Poppins. <laughs> I would like to see traditional au pair strip and reassemble armored personnel carrier. Yeah, well, that's the point. Your average au pair doesn't actually have to do that. I'm sorry, darling, but I've just had to say exactly the same thing to Maria. In the end, if you don't want you, well, that's the end of the story. We'll see about that. No, the, the baby has to eat the plant because it's not got any teeth. So it cannot eat anything else, like, for example, chewing gum. Oh, for goodness sake! <sighs> it is very simple. In nature, there are a number of kinds of reproduction. Sexual, asexual, parthenogenesis. And the man, rather than the lady, well, although it could be the lady, they, they sort of mingle. Oh, well, this is hopeless. I'm going red and I'm on my own. Oh, I'll have to get someone else to do it for me. So when the love spots release their... Hmm, maybe not. And I said, shut your mouth, Dean Tottle. I don't care what colour it is. You're just going to buy it now. Bye. <coughs> yeah? Alison, it's me. I uh, just wanted to check how it's going. Fine. So how many have you found? Some. Few. Well, don't you trust me? No, I don't. How many? He's so suspicious. Well, I have found... Uh, oh, 30. Oh, no, 40. All right, well, I'll keep ringing to check how you're getting on. Oh, well, there's, uh, oh, there's something wrong with the phone. <laughs> You'll have to call me on my mobile. I've got an emergency. Can you pick the kids up from school, please? Uh, what? <coughs> Stop making that noise! Sounds like you're sitting on a chicken. It does not, Eric. I'm returning to a place outside language. Oh, no. Now look what you've made me do. I haven't got time for this, Liz. There's a crisis at work and I'm not going to be able to get away to pick the kids up. So, I thought you could do it. That's typical. I have to do everything. You haven't seen the kids for four weeks. All I'm asking you to do is to pick them up from school. I know what you're saying, Eric. You're saying sacrifice all your deepest spiritual needs for the kids. Don't be a person. Don't have a life. I'm just saying don't have a life between half past three and quarter to four. Then you can come home and do all the farmyard stuff you want. Farmyard stuff? Right the good May the spirit of your language choke you! I don't care, as long as he picks the kids up first. Yeah? Yeah, I'm up to 152. Uh, oh, there, I found another one. Oh, it's 153. What's that car noise? Uh, it's, it's not, it's that's a photocopier. <laughs> I should add that in emphasizing the foundational genetic inheritance, I am not advocating a socio-biological view of the human subject. We must also pay attention to social constructionist accounts of postnatal developments. But that, of course, is outside my remit here, since I have only been addressing the mechanics of in utero maturation. Thank you. How do you spell in utero? It's all right, I'll lend you my notes afterwards. Yeah, it's 200 now. This is fantastic. I'll, I'll be able to pick up the kids after all. You're being a real help, Alison. 233, 234, 235. I feel really guilty about not trusting you now. Yeah, well, just remember the next time you shoot your mouth off and go accusing me of a... of a... uh... Bye! Bye.
nearly there. Okay, let's not anticipate disaster. Alison may have done a few. Just because you saw her in a car doesn't mean that nothing's been done whatsoever. Oh, nothing has been done whatsoever! Maria! What's happened to you? I am on my way back to airport. I go back to my country. I am here to say goodbye and to thank you. What? You have made me realize I'm selfish and irresponsible and that I need to change. This is a debt I can never repay. All right, what do you want? No, I am go. But I want to give you a gift to say thank you for helping me to see it's possible to change. Here is multiple toilet roll holder. You need only fill it up every six months. If you think I'm going to be taken in by this, Maria, you're very much mistaken. I'm not going to suddenly change my mind and take you back. I know. You are right not to trust me. I do not deserve your trust. That is why I must leave. I just hope, perhaps, you wish me some luck. I'm sorry, Maria, but I haven't got time for this. I've got loads of work to do and I've got to pick the kids up. So, goodbye. Goodbye. If you are in trouble, perhaps, you would like that I pick up kids before I go airport? Um, well, I, I, I suppose... No, no, I can manage. So there is nothing I can do for you. No, nothing. Have you have a blue car, you're going to crash it because the last blue car he had, he crashed it. And I said, have a red car. And he said, he didn't like red, he wanted blue. And I said, every blue car you've ever had, you crashed. And look what happened. He crashed it. Claire! Brian! Claire! Brian! Claire! me dear you couldn't help me with this could you it would just save me the walk in reproductive technology. Maria! I am sorry. I hope you don't mind, but I pick kids up. I pass school on my way to airport. I see them waiting, and I worry they're not safe, so I bring them home. I go now. Maria, wait. Thank you. That's okay. Maria, maybe you're right. Maybe people can change. I hope for my sake this is true. I better go. Maria! Nothing. Maria! Nothing. Maria! Nothing. Maria! You don't have to get that plane. You mean... Come home. I would like very much. 
and I would like very much. If you are sure. I'm sure. Daddy, is Maria going to stay for tea? I hope she's going to stay for much longer than that, darling. Just come here. Oh. We are a happy family again. Yes, we are. We've been through some difficult times, but we've stuck together. And that's the only thing that matters. Being a family. Nothing can spoil that. Nothing. Alison Scrapey, annual appraisal. As Alison's line manager, I am profoundly dissatisfied with her performance, which has been hampered by the fact she spends all day on the phone organising her social life. As long as this phone obsession continues, I see no future for her in the data department or indeed anywhere else in Power Enterprises. Have you got anything to say? Listen to me, Dean Totter. You are not coming to the party and that is final. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry Roberts is here. <laughs> PP, is something wrong? What? No, no, I'm fine. Just some excess saliva. <laughs> ah, come in, my dear. Please sit down. And how's my new head of office services? Well, all right. It's just I've never done anything like this before. I mean, it's so different from working in the canteen. You have the assets to overcome anything. As soon as I saw you, I knew you had potential. Well, I hope I'll manage, but it'll take a bit of getting used to. Because when you said you were going to promote me, I thought I was going to be on the beetroot slicer. I really don't know how to thank you. Don't worry. There are ways. And I hope you'll start on Friday by gracing my 50th birthday party with your fragrant presents. I'm inviting all my employees. They can come with their partners. <laughs> Though, of course, they can leave with whoever they want. Eric Feeble's here. In? <laughs> ah, Feeble. I want you to meet Sherry Roberts, the new head of office services. Hello. Hi. Oh, you, you look terribly familiar. D didn't you used to work in... Oh, no, no, couldn't be. What were you going to say? Well, I, I was going to say the, the canteen. <laughs> that's silly. No, no, that's right. I was on salads. And I've promoted her. Hmm, well, it, it's an obvious leap, actually. I mean, they're, they're, they're both all about, um, aren't they? Hand, handling resources, you know, wh whether it's, well, you know, a tomato and a spring onion or, or thousands of square feet of office space and a lot of furniture and computers and things. It, it's, it, it's all about um, arranging it on, 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 on a plate. Sherry here is clearly an outstanding businesswoman with vast potential. What she needs as she sets out in her new role is an assistant to give her a bit of guidance, which is where you come in, Feeble. Thank you. So from today, you'll be helping her out. You will report to her, and she, of course, will be directly under me. <laughs> Listen to me, Dean Toil. I know the invitation said take your partner, but you don't take your partner to work, do you? You only take them to a do-do. And I know a work-do can be like a do-do, but this work-do is like a work-do and it's not a do-do. Alison, I'll be working upstairs today, so I... So if it was a do-do, you could come. Or if it was a work-do that was like a do-do... Alison! I'm busy! I'm warning you, Alison, I am going to send that appraisal upstairs. But it's a work-do and not a do-do, so you're not coming. 
Well, yes, I was a bit surprised. I mean, one day I'm shelling hardboard eggs, and the next I'm responsible for a budget of four million pounds. <laughs> right, OK, let's make a start. Now, the first thing we have to do is sort out furniture allocations for all the regional offices. You see, everyone's getting new desks and chairs and carpets and so on, and we've got to sort out who gets what. Yeah, I've done it. How did you manage to work it all out so quickly? Oh, I'll give everyone the same. See, the way I look at it, furniture is just like salads. No one grumbles if they get the same size portion as everyone else. No, but, but the offices, they're, they're, they're all different. I, I mean, Nottingham is a huge building, you know, thousands of square metres, hundreds of staff, whereas Exeter is just a porter cabin with two people in it. Oh, I didn't think. Do you think people will notice? <laughs> lovely week's holiday, so we're going to have a lovely week's holiday, OK? So where are we going today? It's a surprise. Is it a surprise like the place we went yesterday? The funny place with all the twigs? The Museum of Water Divining is still finding its feet. I think it's fascinating. We're not going there again. No, we're not. We're going to a fun park, like Alton Towers, all right? Hooray! Sherry, <laughs> baby. Put the old bat through. Ah, Mrs. P.P. P.P. here. Just wanted a word re my 50th birthday party. I'm not so sure you will want to come. People aren't bringing their partners. It's all going to be business. Business with data, business with sales, business with office services. What? No, no, I'm fine. Just some excess saliva. Yeah, so why don't you stay at home and finish your grouting? Cheers, matey. In... Oh, it's you, Feeble. Um, well, I, I just... Oh, 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 uh, um. Impressive, isn't it? All the young bucks are wearing them. You'd never guess I was 50. No, no, no. Um, and, and anyway, um, I need to have a word about Sherry. What word would you like? Marvellous? Impressive? Succulent? Yes, all those. But, but, but as well, there, there is a bit of a situation on the furniture front. Um, you see, Sherry... Yes... In a marvellous, impressive, succulent way, has um, misallocated furniture and the regional offices are, are, are going to have serious problems. Are you being critical of Sherry? No, no, no. So it's your fault? No. So you are being critical of Sherry? No. All, all I'm saying is that this problem's arisen and I thought you ought to know. Listen, Feeble. When I made you Sherry's assistant, I made you responsible for everything she does. If she under-orders, if she over-orders, if she spends the entire year's budget on diamond-encrusted silk underwear. <laughs> you all right, Peepee? -pee? What? No, no, I'm fine. Just some excess saliva. The point is, you're responsible. So you'd better fix it. Because if you don't, you'll be out of here faster than a whippet ass burger out of a cannon. <laughs> A ghost train? It's really more a departed spirits train. But the spirits are going to frighten us, please. They're really more going to, to reassure you from the other side. Mm. Yeah, but Ali, listen. No, what I'm, No, but Ali, no. I, what I'm trying... Ali, I... But I only wanted a new door on the cupboard. Yeah, well, this is a trouble with any sort of building work. It's like an Aladdin's cave. You find more and more. Don't worry, we can deal with it. It's just going to cost you a little more. How much? Couple of grand. Plus parts. Plus labour. Plus VOT. Plus another couple of grand. Yes, I'm getting the excess chairs from Exeter sent up to you. They should be with you before the end of the day. Um, yes, and, and, and the carpet's coming too. Well, I hope it's soon. I've got a board meeting starting in a couple of minutes. I'll call Exeter again and check things are on their way. Should I be doing something? I could always make you a salad. I think it's best if I handle everything. Don't, don't worry, I can manage all this. It's really not that much of a problem. You must be so cross with me. Let me just get you a cup of tomatoes or something. No, look, really, Sherry, this isn't your fault. You're so sweet. Stick of celery? Hi, Eric Feeble again. Has the lorry arrived to pick up the stuff? Oh, yes, it has. We're going to try and get it out the window. Right, I'll let Nottingham know. Hi, it's me again. I I've just spoken to Exeter and there's a bit of a delay. Can you improvise? We are improvising, but I can't help thinking there's a better way of using our youth scheme trainees. 
But I thought you said this was the Big Dipper. It is. It's a yogic Big Dipper. Isn't it great? It all happens inside your head. Whoa! It's fine, PP. I'm sorting everything out. Exeter are sending their surplus chairs to Nottingham. They've just got to remove a window to get them out. Um, oh, so, hang on. Hello? Guy who? Oh, yeah, of course, uh, from the Exeter office. Um, did you get the stuff out of the window? No, it got jammed. So the fire brigade came and knocked down the internal wall. All of it messy, really. If any of your furniture got damaged, just let me know and I'll reorder it. We might need a bit more than furniture. You're just like your father. So hostile. Just because it's all a little bit different, a little bit new... What flavour do you want? What is there? Tofu, lentil or bean curds and broccoli. It's all right. We bought some chocolate from home. Mmm. Oh, is that organic, sugar-free Guatemalan cattle but less than 30% hydrogenated vegetable fat? I don't know. It's just an ordinary bar of chocolate. Stop! Right! Freeze! I'm going to have to expel you from the premises immediately! Security alert! Red alert! Red alert! Do not move. You are surrounded by armed persons. <laughs> there, there. You mustn't blame yourself. We can blame Feeble. Oh, but that's no good. What about the next time? And the next time? We can't go on blaming him for the rest of my life. Why not? I've got to face it. I'm useless. I can't do this job. Would you like me to promote you again? Maybe you'd like to be finance director. No. I should just go back to the canteen where I belong. I know what to do with a cucumber. <laughs> you don't need to go back to the canteen. But what else can I do? I've got to pay my bills somehow. Well, I can help you out with that. What do you mean? Well, I can give you a helping hand. And you could do the same for me. I don't understand. Oh, I think you do. <laughs> Yeah, but Ali, I. Yeah, but, but uh, Ali, I. I'm not. Yeah, no. I, three pints of lager top, please, darling. Three packets of pork scratchings, four packets of cheese and onion crisps, five packets of nuts, and three more pints of lager top. Sorted? Yeah, I'm not going. We're not going? Well, after all that. Well, it's a work do. I mean, it's not a do do. Whoa! What do you mean? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, she don't want you there, cos she's got her eye. And uh, maybe more. On someone else. Nah, not Ellie. Well, women, can't trust them. They ain't like blokes. No sense of loyalty. You leave them alone for a minute and suddenly it's like... <laughs> Look at the state of that. <laughs> Sherry, I never meant it to be like this. I just wanted to give you happiness. Please don't push me aside and give me a wide berth. Sherry, I could give you a life of glee and mirth. Will you shut up? You're making a fool out of yourself and me. I don't care. I had to make it up to you somehow. So I got you these. And this. And this. I'm not just after a quick fling and a roll in the hay. I want more than that, my darling. I want lots of quick flings and lots of rolls in the hay. I want us to be together. Whenever I can get away from my wife. You still don't get it, do you? I don't want nothing to do with you. I trusted you. I thought you promoted me because you believed in me. Really? But I tell you this. When I do finally give myself to someone... <laughs> Go on, it's just excess saliva. It's going to be with someone who respects me for what I am, who doesn't lie to me and who doesn't treat me like a piece of meat. Well, with that attitude, you're going to have a long search. Actually, I've already found him. Where? Eunuch support group? No, Power Enterprises.
So I said to him, listen to me, Dean Tottle, you are not coming to the party and that is final. And he said, but I thought the invitation said take your partner. And I said, yeah, I know the invitation said take your partner, but you don't take your partner to a work do, you only take me to a do-do. And I know work do can be like a do-do, but this work do is like a work do, it's not a do-do. Don't you think you should be worried? I know you're not going to send it. Hello? PP, yes, um, I'll, I'll be there right away. Um, I've just got to put Alison's appraisal in my out tray in order to go to personnel immediately. <laughs> I mean it, Alison. I'm really, really serious. Oh, come off it. Why don't you just write me a good one and stop this stupid going on at me? I'd really like to give you a good one, Alison. Believe me, there's nothing I'd like more. Oh, why don't you then? It would be cheating. It would be dishonest. I don't care. <laughs> um. Ah, PP. Um, yes, uh, th there's nothing to worry about now. It's all sorted. Every power office in the country does have the right chairs and tables, and we found another building for Exeter, and it's all covered by insurance, and, well, everything's fine. Um. Vodka feeble. Well, well, it, well, it is only ten past nine, um, and I do prefer to wait till a bit later. Do you mind if I do? Please. Uh, she doesn't love me. I disgust her. Sorry? Sherry, I disgust her. And do you know the worst thing? She's right. It's my 50th birthday tonight, and look at me. Drunk, dressed up like some nightclub owner from Cardiff, and chasing after some fluffy piece of skirt in her twenties, some painted tart, begging her to be <laughs> my lady friend. Have you got a lady friend, Feeble? Have you? Well, n not as such. I. Uh... No one must know, Feeble. No one must know. Don't tell anyone. No, of course not. Because I can't help myself. I'm disgusting. I can't stop. I'm like a rutting deer in a musk shop. I'm obsessed. And do you know the worst thing? Do you? Um, uh, w well... Um... She's after someone else. Someone in this building. She says she loves him because he respects her. Because he's honest with her. Doesn't that make you just sick? Yes. Blech. Feeble. <laughs> I want you to find out who he is, and I want you to bring the name to me. You will find out, won't you, Phoebe? Of, of course. Good. Because when I find out who it is, I'm going to bounce him like a basketball until he pleads for mercy. Please stop. Please stop. You won't tell anyone, will you? You won't tell anyone, because if you do, I'll have to bounce you as well. No, I, I won't say a word. No. You're my friend, aren't you, Feeble? I don't want nothing more to do with her. Me and Ellie Scrapey are finito. But she's your bird. So? Dino, whatever happened to your values? Yeah, loyalty, pride. Smashing a bloke's face in when he touches up your bird. Listen, giving Eric Feeble a good slap ain't gonna solve nothing. <gasps> but it'll make me feel a whole lot better. Please, please, could you just do something? If you don't mind, darling, we have a crisis here. Some people got no sense of priorities. Come on, let's... <laughs> and everything's sorted with PP, so I think what we need to do today... Eric? I've decided to go back to the canteen. Oh. It was stupid to think I could ever do this job. Putting me in charge of office services was like, oh, I don't know, um... Putting Hannibal Lecter in charge of the canteen? Oh, yes! Oh, Eric, you're so funny as well as wise. So, I just wanted to say thank you. Well, that's all right. No, I wanted to really thank you. Well, it's nothing. No, I wanted to really... Really, really thank you. <coughs> You're not like other men, Eric. You respect me. Oh, my goodness. No, no. You see, that's the thing. Um, I don't. You don't see me as a piece of meat. I do. Honest. Um, four. Look at those. I mean, 
you see? <laughs> Eric, that's the most unconvincing bit of acting I've ever seen. But you know what? What? It only makes you more attractive in my eyes. Oh, no. How? You can't disguise your basic honesty and decency. I can. I can. I'm just a bit out of practice. Eric, I want you to be the first. I want to give myself to you. Well, thank you very much. It's a very lovely offer. I mean, it's very kind of you. It's just that I've, 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 um, I, I, I've got a girlfriend. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, Daddy! We are so glad to be home. And you're welcome to keep them. I haven't been so stressed since I dislocated my knee worshipping Woda, the god of dance. Liz, b- before you go, I-, I need a favour. It's really urgent. I need someone to take to a work do this evening. Otherwise, I'm going to be in a really embarrassing situation. I'll tell you what an embarrassing situation is. Being ejected from a theme park whilst an entire community jeers and pelts you with free range of dookie beans! Daddy, you could take Maria to the party. She has been at home all week with nothing to do, so she would probably like to go out. Oh, I love the half term. <laughs> Oof, I don't think so. Well, who are you going to take? What? Pretend to be your girlfriend? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's only for one night. That is revolting. Please, th- this woman's after me and I just need to put her off the scent. Oh, why don't you just tell her you're not interested? I tried, but she wouldn't take no for an answer, so I had to tell her I'd got a girlfriend. And that's why I need you to come with me to the party. Absolutely no, 100% totally never, no way, never, 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 nil percent. Any internal mail, Eric? <laughs> I'll do it, but no snogging. OK, we're going to get things underway now on the karaoke front. <laughs> First up, we've got, now, uh, let me see, a great ditch bird. Hello. Yeah, hold, hold it down, hold it down, son. It's very foul, very foul. Now, what do you want to sing, Graham? Uh, it's probably a bit of a long shot. <laughs> you haven't got any Barclay James Harvest, have you? Get off! I didn't do anything. You put your hand on my back. No snogging means no touching in general. We've got to touch each other a bit. We're supposed to be boy and girlfriend. But we're not, are we? No, shh, shh. Ah, feeble. <laughs> Have you found him yet? No, 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 no. I've got no idea who he is whatsoever. I'm, I mean, he could be anyone out of hundreds, thousands. But he's here tonight. And when I find him, bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. I reckon he's a younger man, maybe divorced, certainly unattached. Have you met my girlfriend? You know Alison, don't you? I didn't know you were going out. Well, not really. Um, um, Until recently, it's been a long, slow courtship thing. So how long has it been? Two weeks. A month. Two weeks. Um, Three days. Well, anyway, um, you, you probably want a drink, don't you, darling? Get off! Hmm. Excuse me, can I see your invitation? Down, it's powerful. Need a bucks already at a nosebleed. Hello, Eric. Get off. I hope this isn't a bad time. Oh, no, not at all. No, no, I was just, um, just having a game of. With Alison, my girlfriend, who, who I'm here with, and who came here with me, because we're going out. We're incredibly close, aren't we? 
darling, I listen. I told you. There you go. Slaps. Oh, what a great game. Ah, Sherry, my dear. <laughs> Can I get you anything? A drink? A dance? A pied de terre in Chelsea. Excuse me, I'm talking to Alison and Eric. Ah, yes, the lovebirds. More's the pity. Right, well, I'll leave you two to chat and um, I'll talk to Alison here. She's my, my girlfriend. So, you two, um, get together and come on, Alison. Look, I'm getting sick of this. I told you, no touching. No touching? Not much of a relationship, is it, Feeble? <laughs> no, no, she, she's just a big tease. That's why I love her, don't I? It's that Latin temperament. I thought she was from Romford. Yes, but, but, but her temperament's from Italy. <coughs> Problem, Feeble? No, no, it's just a stunt for charity. <coughs> that is for touching my bird. His bird? B bird, bird, uh, yes, it's, it's a bird. It's, 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 from, it's a Cockney rhyming slang thing for, for um, 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 curd. Ish. Refugees, which is the charity which that was the stunt for. I've got your number, Feeble. Next up, uh, Alison Scrapey. Come on, Alison. Right, I'm going to sing now. I keep it down, it's very powerful, I keep telling you. We've got to do a song together. Something very smoochy, something very loving. Oh, you've got to help me. Leave me alone. My boyfriend's here. This charade is over. Mrs. P.P., what, what are you doing here? Well, P.P., I finished my grouting, thought I'm your wife, damn it, and I belong here by your side. Cheers, matey! Hmm. Ch cheers, matey. No, that is it. I'm not doing it anymore. I ain't going to be your girlfriend. If PP finds out Sherry's after me, he's going to kill me. Eh? He's obsessed with her. He's been giving her presents. He's been visiting at her house and writing her stupid poems. He's an unstable, sad, mad drunk who's going through some pathetic menopause and he's out of control and he's threatening to kill whoever it is she's after. So for Pete's sake, will you please keep up this charade just for a few hours? Longer, longer. longer. <gasps> you Asperger! <gasps> Where's me grouting trowel? Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy! Right, I'm gonna sing now. 